Hello and welcome, this is Old Man Cool. I'm jumping into an M19 PTQ event. Haven't actually done Sealed since the pre-release, so I think this will be a, a pretty fun way to jump back into it. Before I jump into the Sealed pool at large, I do want to say I'm running a survey right now. I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys saying that you'd like to see a little bit more Magic Online content, maybe a little bit less Arena content, and I guess the survey is like six questions, and the biggest one I'm hoping to answer is, yeah, just how many of you want to see Arena content? And how many of you want to see Magic Online? How many of you really don't care? So it's a great way for you guys to help me out, help me kind of direct the channel in the direction you guys want to see. So take that out, or take that survey. It'll just be in the uh, description below. Helps me out a lot, and I'll keep producing great content for you guys. Uh, yeah, let's jump into the sealed pool. Start out by looking at our rares. That's always the most exciting. Well, Liliana Untouched by Death is a Planeswalker, but probably the Planeswalker we're least excited about. I would think that we'd need at least, like... 8, 9, 10 zombies, quite a few before she's good, and I don't think many seal pools will have that. But, on the other side of the spectrum, we've got a Banefire and a Smith's Pyromancer, which are both very, very good. Kind of hope to play for red for those. Gin of Wishes, also super solid. I'll bet it's even better in sealed than it is in regular draft. Dragon's Horde seems okay, especially if we have a couple of dragons running around. And Hungering Hydra, playable, not like exceptional, but definitely something that will make just about any green deck. Uh, let's look at it by color. So for those of you that don't haven't seen me do a, a sealed event before, usually I'll take the cards I really enjoy, um, think that are good, and put them up in this kind of top column. Then cards that I think are sort of playable, put that down below, and then I'll leave the cards that I really would rather not play up top. And I won't make you, make you guys listen to me him and haw over every individual card. So let's go ahead and start with white. So white's a little bit interesting because I think it's actually one of the more heavily synergy driven uh, colors in the set. And we have a card like Johnny's Pride Mate or like Ether Shield Artificer, which can be absolute all-stars, but really do need kind of a deck built around them. And I think overall our white looks pretty poor here. We have a couple of other Knight's Pledge that we maybe would play. I, I do think this card is playable. It's kind of borderline. You're only playing it as like a 23rd, like 22nd playable sort of thing. Frustering Falcon, just kind of okay. I don't think it does quite enough unless you've got a lot of auras. Like Knight's Pledge, to be fair, to go on it. And the only Vanguard, I think you have to be pretty aggressive before you're happy with. So our white looks pretty poor. Let's jump into blue. Hopefully this is a little bit better. We do have that Gin of Wishes, so we'd like to be able to play that if we can. So I am quite a bit happier with our blue. We've got an Exclusion Mage, two copies of Sleep, Switcheroo, Salvager of Secrets, and Gin of Wishes, which I all think are quite good. Salvager of Secrets does ideally want to be getting maxed, like powerful removal spells. This is a little bit deck dependent as well, but I think most of the time in Sealed you'll have time to play this and you'll be happy with it. Switcheroo also, I think more often we're going to be caring about like one or two really big threats and trading away something little like an Omen Speaker or some other kind of dirty little card late in the game for their best threat. Seems pretty solid. And Jinn of Wishes, obviously quite good. Just a 4-4 for flying for 5 is already pretty great. And then there's card advantage that comes along with it. I have Aether Tunnel down here in the maybe playable camp. I think this card can be very good. It's a great sideboard card against some decks, but it is an aura and does have its usual problems. But I think overall we've got some pretty solid commons, like not crazy exciting cards, but good filler as well in blue. So I think there's a good chance to wind up playing blue here. Let's look at our black next. So our black is actually pretty solid, despite the fact that we have a lot of cards that I, I don't really think are all that playable. We have like Lich's Caress, we have some Skeleton Archers, Grave Diggers, Bone Letter, don't think there's enough zombies really to go along with Liliana, but all in all, there's some pretty good stuff here. We actually have a decent shell for a life gain deck if we had happened to get the uh, the cards that really cared about that in white. Although, I think because our white is so poor, that means we won't be able to play things like Epicure Blood, despite the fact they're very good with Vampire Neonate. Black is deep, but not incredibly exciting. Like, there's a bunch of fine, good cards, but it's not nuts or anything. Not as good as that, or blue is, I think, even though there are more playables. Let's look at, I guess, red and keep going down the line here. Well, unfortunately, our red's actually kind of unexciting here. Have a lot of cards that I really don't think are all that playable, unless you're quite aggressive and we just don't have the aggressive cards to back it up. We do have the two rares and a Siegebreaker Giant, but only a couple of two drops, and like Bali Veteran is good, but you need a lot more goblins than this. We've only got one other card that produces them. The red actually looks pretty bad. Maybe we'll end up trying to splash Banefire. Probably can't try and splash Dismissive Pyromancer, although that is pretty good. 
we'll have to see what our uh, fixing looks like here at the end, but not exciting. Do we have anything either that really helped directly with red sky scanner? I guess there is Dragon's Horde. We don't have any dragons to go along with it. Yeah, kind of disappointing. Probably Banefire will make the cut just because of its high power level in general, even if it's not easy for us to splash, but not, not fantastic there. Hopefully our green is pretty good and it can help complement blue, though. Well, our green is kind of weird. We've got a Dry Green Seeker, Hungering Hydra, actually, Giant Spider probably shouldn't be up there, as there are only two real, like, crazy exciting cards for the, the pool. But we do have three Elvish Rejuvenators, which means we potentially could play a pretty, like, aggressive kind of risky mana base we may end up just playing like blue black since that's got some of our uh deepest colors but we could try and play something like really dirtily with elvish rejuvenator and blue is like our good main color but also trying to splash things like banefire lich's crest is double black i guess maybe that puts it a little bit too far beyond we do have a poison tipped archer which is a nice payoff as well if we end up being able to play green and black Fossil Majesty, you guys know I love to death, although I don't think they're actually the, the cards to make it work in this pool. And yeah, our lands, like, Explosive Apparatus will make the cut. Probably not our Dragon Sword, but Sky Scanner will. Gearsmith Guardian, if we're in blue, which I think we probably will be, so it probably will be in the cut. There's Dragon's Horde as well. It's, it's okay, we'd probably play it just for the synergy it has with Banefire. Rogue's Gloves, I guess Rogue's Gloves is kind of a wombo with Aether Tunnel. Okay, so not like a nut sealed pool or anything. I do think our blue is kind of head and shoulders above everything else. Let's pull out white. I don't really think we have enough cards in there to really make that work. Realistically, probably not playing green either. Like, outside of the three rejuvenators, there's just very little reason to be green. Like, giant spider's pretty good. Center Corsair's kind of eh. And then both of these cards are good. Yeah, I think we have to let green die as well. So we're really... Not playing a lot of our bombs, which is not where you like to be in sealed. But maybe blue-black splashing for like Banefire is just good enough to get there. Let's let's build that deck and see what it looks like at first here. We also, I guess, have one Submerged Boneyard, which makes it a little bit easier to play this as well. And yeah, maybe we would play Dragon Sword, maybe not. But let's see how this looks here. Oop, sort by Convert Mana Cost. So definitely a lot of playables here. We've got 31 to begin with. Probably don't want to play like Abnormal Endurance in this deck. It's pretty good with Exclusion Mage. Okay with Skymarch Bloodletter. Well, I guess we actually do have a... Well, we have a medium number of buyback effects actually, so maybe Abnormal Endurance ends, ends up being okay. Don't think Aether Tunnels we want, want to main deck. Nightmare's Thirst has only one immediate synergy in this deck. Yeah, I think just the Vampire Neonate, which I don't know if it's really good enough to make work. And by that argument, maybe the Epicure Bloods are a little bit suspect as well. I think just playing Neonate on its own is not the worst. It's kind of a nice, like, anti-aggro card. I think it's better than something like Walking Corpse in the late game. So, I'm probably end up playing that. Do like both copies of Sleep, even though we're not incredibly aggressive. If you get to play two of these, a lot of times you can win even from a pretty bad board state. And... You never know, you can't use this defensively too, although it's not as great for that. So I guess we're looking for more stuff to cut. I like the Gravedigger quite a bit. I think I'm kind of playing all of these cards. Maybe cut the other Epicure. I think Frilled Sea Serpent's actually something we kind of need. Maybe Abnormal Endurance isn't that great. I have like dreams of buying back something like a Gin of Wishes. I mean, it's pretty good with like Salvager of Secrets too. But nah, I... I think that might just be a bit much. We'll probably only play one Macabre Waltz, too, although I do like having the one. Let's burst, Anticipate, play all of these. We're at 24 playables right now. This deck does look fairly good to me. It's maybe a little bit lacking in card advantage. Like, this deck would love a Sift or like a... Uh, what's the card called? Ancient Encyclopedia? Arcane Encyclopedia, I think. But we have some, like, pretty reasonable removal. We've got some potential inevitability with things like Banefire or Frilled Sea Serpent. Gene of Wishes is obviously great. I think we can probably Dirtle until we manage to get there. Maybe we cut, like, Totally Lost as our last top-end card. Don't love Two-Headed Zombie in this deck, but it, it may have to do. It is a four-power creature. Like, it will trade on defense a lot of the time, and, you know, sometimes it'll be our game-winning threat. Don't think we're really missing out on anything else here. Could play Aether Tunnel just as 
a hey we need to get my opponent or try to get my opponent we could also like splash for hungering hydra but yeah that that feels pretty unexciting honestly don't like rogues gloves that much again it's good with either tunnel though and Dragon's Horde seems kind of whatever. We're not playing a crazy high curve deck. We just don't have enough expensive things to really merit it. I think I would rather just have an extra land than this card a lot of the time. Yeah, maybe we play 18 lands though. It does give us a higher chance of flooding. The odds of us finding Banefire naturally are not super, super high though. Like, Anticipate, I guess, kind of helps. It's really kind of it other than us just playing for like a really long game. I guess Salvador of Secrets can help us get it back at some point if we need to. I think we might want to play 18 lands and just be able to play two mountains and try and get Banefire in there. This card is very, very good. Like, I think it's absolutely worth splashing for. So if we're cutting one more creature, what's it going to be? Maybe we cut the two-headed zombie. I think it's the least on theme card. Comparing to Unate, I think is okay. Yeah, I guess maybe let's cut two at its zombie. And then we just run 18 lands out of this. Don't feel too bad about it. I like two mountains, I think. And we are heavier on blue than black, but I'm not sure we want to go quite that far. Maybe go, let's go like eight, seven, which gives us nine, eight, and then two from the, the mountains. That seems fine. Yeah, again, I don't think this, this pool is like nuts or anything, but I don't think it's poor either. Let's see if we can get that uh, at least 4-1 finish and get our uh, PTQ token. I'll see you guys for match one. All right, we are back for match one. Do not love this hand. Is this hand bad enough to mulligan? Might be. I have a lot of lands. We do have one mountain in the mix and a good mix of islands and swamps, which definitely has upside. It's slow format, at least I assume most of my opponents are going to be pretty slow. I think I might just keep here, even though we're not doing too much in the early game, and hope the Exclusion Mage is enough to buy me time. I'm going to go ahead and keep. Eh, this is not what you're looking for, but Cobb Waltz is also a card you'd rather have a little bit later in the game, but I guess if we really need to, we could like play Exclusion Mage and chump and throw out extra lands or something. Yeah, I don't know. doesn't seem great. Okay, Anticipate actually makes this hand much, much better, though. It gives us something to do on turn two, and is very likely to find us a little bit more action along the way. My opponent have a two-drop. Johnny's Pride Mate. Okay. That card is good. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and pass here. Plan on anticipating at the end of my opponent's turn. Let's see if they have some follow-up. does look like it is a legit, like, black-white life gain deck of some variety here. be interesting to see how many payoffs they have. Yeah, we're just going to have to take this here. And we go down to 18, see if my opponent has a follow-up. Probably not a... well, it could be the Scammer's Bloodletter, but I think they would probably play it before Johnny's Pride Mate if that was the case. This opponent's got a Sky Scanner, drawing a free card, and we will anticipate. And find Mind Rot, I guess. Well, at least we did not draw all those lands. Mind Rot's not miserable, although it's not fantastic either. Ooh, Skeleton Archer is pretty good though. It'll take out the Sky Scanner for a little bit of value. I think I want to wait until my opponent gets down to a fewer cards in hand so we can mind rot maybe their potentially like Big Bomb or whatever else. I think we're going to play Explosion Mage for not tons of value. Just bounce the Pride Mate here. And then plan on playing the Skeleton Archer next turn. This is definitely not using Exclusion Mage to its full potential, but I think it is fine. It's got Fell Spectre. Ugh, don't like Fell Spectre much. Okay, 1-3 Flyer is already kind of nice. Gets to do 2 damage to us immediately and force us to discard a card. Fortunately, that doesn't hurt us too much in this case since we're kind of heavy on lands anyway, but Hell Spectre is a good one. So my opponent has 1 Johnny's Pride Mate and a bunch of unknown cards. They have not missed a land drop yet. Let's play our Skeleton Archer. I guess actually let's play our Mountain. Because if my opponent may have more discard, I don't want to get stranded with this in our hand. I guess we swing with the Exclusion Mage. I don't think there's any downside to it. My opponent probably will just block, but... I guess if we do that, though, then we can use Skelton Archer to kill it. Yeah, I guess that's just upside, right? Or maybe they'll be wary of Skelton Archer and not block. Either way, it's pretty okay with me. Okay, yeah. Free damage. I think we're still going to play the Skelton Archer right away. My opponent gets to feel smart about the fact they did not block, but we still get to kill Sky Scanner. so... If we'd had, like, the... The mirror there, that could have been really, really devastating. Although, I guess we'd already played our mountains, so... 
Okay, Johnny's Pride Mate. Vampire Neonate. Ooh, that's a nasty combo. Mm, we may need a way to interact with the Pride Mates sooner rather than later here. Yeah, just gonna take one point of damage from the Fell Spectre. Jane of Wishes is a great draw. We crash in with Skeleton Archer. My opponent will just take it. They'll go down to 15, but then next turn they can swing with the Pride Mate probably. So I think actually we don't attack at all. We just play the Jane of Wishes and hope that a 4-4 flying is something my opponent is going to have a tough time dealing with. If we need to, we can always Macabre Waltz it back a little bit later too. Ooh, Marauder's Axe. So I can put that on the Spell Spectre and turn it into a 3-3. It's not quite big enough to interact with the Djinn favorably. Okay, just leaving up the extra mana for the Vampire Neonate. Well, my opponent is down to two cards in hand now. We can either activate the Djinn or blow out the last two cards. I think the activations on the Djinn aren't necessarily going anywhere. I think I'd rather just pull apart my opponent's hand, even though this is a little bit less mana efficient. My opponent did not play a land last turn, right? No, they did, but they missed on turn five, which means they probably are have two actual non-land cards in hand. And if they have something like Lich's Crest, we really want to get it out of there. So I think it's just Mind Rot. Oh, wow, two Lich's Crests. That is brutal. Whew, I am super, super pleased. So do we swing with the Gin of Wishes? I think we're okay with that still. My opponent can potentially make this into a 4-4. I guess even as much as a 6-4, we can double block that at least at this point. Eventually we can Macabre Waltz to get back like Exclusion Mage. Wow, I can't believe we hit two Lich's Cresses there. That was pretty devastating. One goes down to 14, and we go down to 13, they go up to 15 off the Vampire Neonate. We're, we're not like in a fantastic, fantastic position, but I do think we're doing fairly well. Jin's gonna start getting us pretty immediate card advantage. And Johnny's Pride Mate is their like biggest danger. I guess Fell Spectre's a little bit rough. That's a good point. Maybe we actually don't want to trade damage here. Especially given that we have some more like potentially good card advantage off the Jin. Maybe we don't have to just yet. Yeah, maybe that was a bad attack. Skymarch Bloodletter is good. So we have access to 7 mana now, so we can actually do both. So I guess let's play our Jin effect very first and see what we draw. Okay, Swamp's not fantastic, but at least it's not something we're drawing next turn, right? So as it stands right now, my opponent has... I guess we're at 9, and thereafter they have 4 points of damage a turn. We're going to go up to 10... No, 9 because the Vampire Needy Eldrina. So I guess we're at 10 this turn, and thereafter they can do... 4-4. Four, four. If they are getting hit by both of these, that's 6 a turn, so we're actually still losing that race. Yeah, I think we need to just keep the gin back. Stupid Fell Spectre. Those 5 extra points of damage are just not irrelevant. We're gonna slowly burn out from the Vampire Neonate. Although if we find something like Sleep, which we have 2 of in the deck, we win. Like, we get a really massive tempo advantage out of that. Yeah, I think we just sit on our hands and hope to draw either Sleep or Lich's Caress or Switcheroo or... Like, we, we have some good draws here. Yep. Ouch. Ravenous Harpy. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. My opponent doesn't have cards they want to throw away here, but just having the opportunity to, if we point, like, removal at something, is a pretty big game. Okay, no play. Still keeping up the Vampire Neonate for their activation next turn. Another land. Let's do our Gin of Wishes activation. Bainfire also would change the, the math quite a bit here. Gravedigger. Well, <laughs> I guess you might as well cast it. No value, though. That's unfortunate. Hmm. So, we still just don't have any good attacks, right? I think we're still best off just waiting for sleep, even though we are draining little by little here. And the Johnny's Pride Mate gets larger and larger. Yeah, I still just don't think we have a, a great, great attack here. Fell Spectre with the Marauder's Axe. Doing good work here. F6. There we go. 
Johnny's Pride Man gets a little bit bigger. It potentially can get up to a 6-6 six, six now at instant speed. My opponent's Ravenous Harpy can go all the way up to a 4-5, I guess. Although, that would be pretty expensive. Shield Mare. Okay, three points of life is not irrelevant. But other than that, this card's not real great for us. Or not real great for my opponent. So if my opponent just swings in with the Pride Mate, we could just Macabre Waltz and try and get back those two. We could trade in a Gin of Wishes. So this goes all the way up to potentially a 7-7. Seven, seven. We block with Gin of Wishes, Macabre Waltz, bring it back. We have 3, 6, 8, so we're not guaranteed to be able to wish in the same turn. We could do that. We could block with like both of these two. Making sure the Pride Mate dies seems not terrible, since then like Skeleton Archer maybe starts getting in on the ground. So we block with all three of these. I have a tough time seeing that go really wrong because of Macabre Waltz. Do we want to reset the Djinn? I don't think I really want to lose, lose the Skeleton Archer. Guess we'll block something like this and see how my opponent wants to leave us. Macabre Waltz does look really good here though, for sure. Ooh, I think I made a mistake actually. Instead of playing the Mountain, I could have played Island and gotten rid of that last Wish Counter. I forget that it doesn't actually like tap this or anything. Yeah, that was actually a fairly big misplay. Yeah, that was that was pretty big. We missed out on a wish. I was thinking, you know, might as well play the extra mountain, but yeah, that was just downside. Okay, let's return Exclusion Mage and our Jin. Discard Island. We lose another two life, but that's okay. Replay Jin of Wishes. Ooh, do we want to start swinging with our uh, Skeleton Archer at this point? I think so. My opponent wants to trade two cards and make a big Ravenous Harpy. I think that's not terrible for us, especially since we have Exclusion Mage. I don't really think it's likely my opponent will do that, but... I think I'm okay trading Skeleton Arch for pretty much anything on my opponent's side of the board, so... So take my opponent down to 16. Man, this game would not have been remotely close had we not gotten those two Lich's Caresses. We're still just like a sleep or a bane fire away from really getting my opponent pretty badly though. Yep. Vampire Neonate continues to drain away. Yeah, missing out on that one wish from the Jin. Hopefully that does not cost us the game. That was a pretty big miss. Ooh, that's scary. Oh man, that's scary. My opponent has like minus three, minus three. They get to kill off the Jin. We could wait one more turn. I can take three, go down to, or yeah, take three, go down to three here. Exclusion Mage and Jin or Jin twice. We could block with both of these, in which case the Jin dies. But we get to kill off the Spell Spectre and then start getting in for two every turn. The Jin just represents such massive card advantage, but I don't think we can win in three turns, so I'm not sure that we can not block. I guess if we are blocking, we're double blocking though. I think that the minus three minus three is the most likely play for my opponent. Oof. It's rough. Oh. Maybe they have a... Interesting. A Macabre Waltz of their own? Or they just have something that gives minus... Oh, Skeleton Archer to finish the job. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Good for my opponent. I'm not sure that we had another option there though either. Okay, well, we haven't played this match perfectly, and I think we might be getting punished some. Okay, so we swing at Skeleton Archer and Blood March, or Sky March Blood Letter. We swing at the Blood Letter, the problem is my opponent just has lethal, right? Because they, well, I guess they don't actually have lethal because they don't have the mana for it. They play two, equip up the Ravenous Harpy, and then can sack three things. I guess that is enough. Six, exactly six. I think we need the Exclusion Mage to potentially bounce the Ravenous Harpy at some point. Hmm. If my opponent ever taps out, we could try an Explosive Apparatus it. Yeah, this is not going great for us. I think we need to sit on Exclusion Mage. I mean, we could Ravenous Harpy and get rid of it. What are our outs here? Salvager of Secrets into, like, Cobalt would be pretty good. Switcheroo would be fairly okay. I guess we probably need to Exclusion Mage. No, because I need to wait for it to bounce the Harpy. Alright, we'll just pass. Oh um, man, this is death by a thousand cuts from the Vampire Neonate, though. Not going excellently for us. 
Yeah, Ravenous Harpy is a good one. One finds Dwarven Priest. Gains a fair amount of extra life on top, although... As it stands right now, the Dwarven Priest, I think, is the least of our worries. Not equipping up the Marauder's Axe. I think looks like they'd just rather get in with the Vampire Neonate. My opponent doesn't really want a two for one themselves, or I guess one for two. I guess they have to sacrifice stuff for the Harpy. Okay. Uh, point being, if they'd gotten in there, we could have blocked and shot it, I think. Okay, Sky Scanner. Good draw. Lich's Caress. So now we can kill the Vampire Neonate. Probably the direction we need to go. We could get rid of the Harpy. We could swing with our Sky March Bloodletter. If we've got these two, we're just trying to get down a little bit on a beatdown line. My opponent does get to drain us turn after turn. We kill the Neonate, they'll make the Harpy bigger. And then we don't have a good block next turn. I think we need to just get rid of the Harpy. Yeah, I think we need to get rid of the Harpy. The extra life here will be uh, very welcome, though. I can't believe we missed that free activation. That was pretty, pretty clumsy. Okay, swing with our Scamarch Bloodletter. Take my opponent back down to 20. <laughs> Yeah, the opponent just draining us out here. So, excuse me, down to 21. We do need to play a little bit faster here, too. We've already used up about half of our time, and these sealed matches have the potential to go very long, I think. Hey, Cavalry Drillmaster. That's going to be kind of brutal. Probably going to have to trade away the Sky Scanner here for that activation. Okay, opponent's got a 5 3 Skeleton Archer and a 4 4 Dwarven Priest making havoc here. So to swing with everything, we can chump block the Skeleton Archer. We actually still get a good trade against the Dwarven Priest, which is kind of nice. Like, it's not great for us, but it's not terrible either. So we block like that. Block like that, block like that. Point trades for the Skeleton Archer. Sky Scanner bites the dust for sure. We get Exclusion Mage, something here. And we have Banefire, although my opponent said really, really high life total. We could just kill the Vampire Neonate with it, maybe get it back at some point with the Salvager Secrets. What do we want to bounce with Exclusion Mage? Like, nothing seems fantastic to bounce. We've got 9 mana available. Bouncing Skeleton Archer gets us for an extra point of damage. Shield Merit gains my opponent some life. Drill Master is probably the worst of the options. We just bounce Neonate, Banefire away the Skeleton Archer. Then all of a sudden we're not too bad of a spot. My opponent replays Neonate and continues burning us for a little while. We still have like Gearsmith Guardian that would be pretty good for breaking this open though. Salvager of Secrets. Built Sea Serpent. Yeah, I think we're bouncing Vampire Neonate at this point. And Bane firing away the Skeleton Archer. But drains us for one. The Neonate's done some really good work this game for sure. I think it definitely has a place in slower sealed formats. Okay, kill the archer and swing with the bloodletter. Okay, well, here we are, here we are. Pony can keep making good trades with the Marauder's Axe. That's also been something that has performed very well for my opponent. Vampire Neonate, not real surprising. Whip up the Shield Mare. Okay. And we have to take the two for one on the Shield Mare, I think. Go to block, go to block. I guess if my opponent has a trick, they get us pretty bad, but they would have had to have drawn it this turn. Oh, wow. Well, that's pretty good. All right, and normal endurance off the top. Okay, my opponent goes back up to 23. Sleep not looking too great right now. I guess maybe we need to do it, though. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage next turn if we don't. So we'll sleep to buy some time. Get in with the Sky March Bloodletter while well, we can, kind of for free. The crazy thing, though, is we're still just not, like, dead in this game. It feels like we should be dead, but we have good outs. Well, the mist actually isn't even all that bad. Get in with the Bloodletter... This now blocks whatever, and we can, like, Explosive Apparatus or weigh the other threat. Like, we've made mistakes, and I don't think that... Like, my opponent... I think we could have beaten my opponent pretty soundly, but mistakes have held us back a little bit. But the game's still just not over. And Rodder's Axe on the Neonate. Interesting. That's really going for, gut, for blood. 
saying, hey, my life, life total really doesn't matter. I'm just trying to press through such a small amount of extra damage. Um, I guess maybe we should Explosive Apparatus before, but it's maybe a little bit nice to make sure my opponent's not going to have anything here, too. They have another Abnormal Endurance off the top, I guess they kind of get us. Lock like that. Go down to five. Oh, that's only twice as fast as a clock off the Vampire Neonate. Come on, nothing great. Okay, well, Falcon probably keeps our Bloodletter at bay now. Yeah. Stupid Axe. Okay. Gearsmith Guardian's pretty good, though. Can probably start pounding in on the ground. And we will trade away the Bloodletter for the Falcon, for sure. So we still have, we're on a five turn clock, because Vampire Neonate will kill us, but we can find our own Neonate, we can find like Switcheroo, Sleep maybe still gets there. You don't have that many more draws in the deck. One other advantage of my opponent is drawn maybe a little bit land light, and we've drawn a little bit land heavy as well. Ooh, Omen Speaker, I like me an Omen Speaker. I guess let's swing with our Gearsmith first. Am I okay trading that for the Falcon and the Shield Mare? think so. So let's get in with that. My opponent is inclined to double block, that's fine. They are not. Down to 14. Fire Omen Speaker. It also shores up the ground fairly well. Okay, do we want a sleep? Sleep hits my opponent for a fair amount. Yeah, I think that's bottom the island. Pop the sleep. There are better draws out of the deck, but not that many. Again, Salvager Secrets would still be better. Switcheroo would probably still be better. Okay, we get drained. Mm. But sleep this next turn, like, Delta's is getting for two pretty big attacks. My opponent has to have something off the top. Okay. So we cast sleep here. Tap down my opponent's board. Kraken for eight. My opponent goes to their draw. If they just, like, brick on lands, we have lethal here. Not impossible. Not impossible. Okay, they did find something. Reassembling Skeleton. Well, that's actually even a pretty good something. Oh, and another effect? Oh, we're gonna equip up the Marauder's Axe, probably. Kinda might as well. I've got the mana to do so. Darn. I was going to say, there's still some ways out of that, but that is good. So actually, I don't think we even have an attack at this point. Um, might as well play the Swamp. But yeah, uh, we swing in with the um, Gearsmith Guardian, my opponent. I guess they're kind of obliged to chump block. If they chump block that, that still blocks there, that still blocks there. We're using up two of my opponent's mana just by forcing him to do it. Does have to come back in tapped. No, because that's right. They bring it back and then they can equip up and swing. And then they have too many threats. Yeah, okay. I was thinking about that, right? So no attacks. Still hoping for that Salvager of Secrets into Banefire off the top, but... It's close. My opponent's going to gain a couple more life here. Probably just has a land in hand for the last card. No attacks. Okay, land for us. Uh, do we have any reason to actually play the last land? Guess not, although we don't really have any reason not to either. Again, it lets my opponent know we don't have a trick, but things are desperate enough, I think they're going for it anywhere. We get one more draw here, because Vampire Neonate taps, burns us for one, and then can burn us for one at the end of our next turn, and then can burn us for one again. So we have to find like exactly Switcheroo or Salvager of Secrets does it. Grilled Sea Serpent is not enough, so I guess we won't waste any more time here since I have spent a lot of time on this game. And we'll go to our next match. Alright, so we'll have to play a little bit fast going forward. I think other Macabre Waltz is not terrible. I think it's going to be an uphill battle. My opponent having two Lich's Crests that we got from that game and still manage to take it out is a pretty big deal. Don't really like Totally Lost. 
Omen Speaker still seems okay. Wall of Mist doesn't seem fantastic, but it seems okay. Still hate the sleeps. Maybe let's cut Wall of Mist. All right, let's run this back. All right, we would like to play first, and we're gonna keep this hand, seems okay. Still like me a Mind Rod as much as the next fellow. And let's play our Explosive Apparatus, and we're off to the races. Ooh, my opponent's got the Neonate right off the top. That is unfortunate for us, since that kind of single-handedly won my opponent the game last match. Cavalry Drillmaster, ooh yeah, look at this aggro start. Getting in for two damage right off the bat. So we're just going to bounce my opponent's Neonate, I think with the Exclusion Mage, and try and trade it off, and then rebuy it with Gravedigger. Hey, I like me a Salvager of Secrets. Our Mage. Bounce the Neonate. We don't really want to let my opponent just rebuy the Drillmaster trigger. Okay, replay Neonate. Kraken in. Ooh, Explosive Apparatus. Looks like they may be missing a land drop, since they played two ones there. Come on, trade, you know you want to. Nah, all right. Well, in that case, we'll just play Sky Scanner here. And hopefully find more lands. I guess we'll play Mountain. Again, want to make that get that out of our hand in case we want to discard a land a little bit later. Swing of the Exclusion Mage. Sure. And we've got Sky Scanner to, to trade with my opponent's Cavalry Drill Master if they want to. Or if they want to use like an apparatus, that's okay too. Ooh man, the Neonate Offensive. It's kind of great actually. So maybe we want to Mind Rot now and then Salvager of Secrets and Mind Rot again in a couple turns. Yeah, I think that's okay. Just pull apart my opponent's hand some. You're going to get some pretty good drain on here from the Vampire Neonate, but they look like they're stuck on lands, so Mind Rot could be pretty devastating. Shield Mirror and Angel of Dawn. Yeah, those are both cards I'm really happy to get rid of here. Potentially kind of hard for my opponent to play, but yeah, cards I am happy to see go. Okay, find another land. We're going to Salvager of Secrets, bring back the uh, Mind Rot here. Sure. And get in with our Sky Scanner once again. It's got to be rough for my opponent when you're stuck on two lands and you're just going to have to discard four. Like, they had a pretty good opening considering they only have two lands, but it's a tough spot to be in, too. They play Sky Scanner. We mind route them again and get all but their last card. Both, yeah, both solid stuff that we just pulled out of my opponent's hand. Uh, Gravedigger doesn't actually get back anything relevant here, so we're just going to pass. My opponent has a much better beatdown threat than we do. And the Vampire Neonates are like an onboard threat. The card badge we've gotten is mostly just turned into lands for us, so... That's not always going to be enough. We could Explosive Apparatus, blow up their Sky Scanner, keep getting in for a point. I don't know if that's actually even worth it. Maybe we swing with Salvager, though, and use the Explosive Apparatus to blow up one of these Neonates. That seems actually pretty good. Maybe we should have done that last turn. No blocks. And we'll just pass the turn. We'll want to get value out of our Gravedigger if we can in any way possible here. My opponent wants to go for it, we're happy to take stuff. Yeah, nothing yet. Okay, another land. Keep getting in there with our Salvager. And I guess at least we're trading tit for tat with my opponent's Neonates. Yeah, they're just missing on tons of lands here, though. I mean, we're kind of flooded, I guess, but kind of crazy, honestly. Maybe we should sandbag lands in case they have their own Mind Rod. Yeah, got me. Okay, found another land. Skeleton Archer. Okay, that's pretty good. Gets to pick off. A perfectly fine card for us. We'll play Gravedigger and rebuy it here, but that's still good value for my opponent. Still don't think we want to use the apparatus. We'll just take one. Play Gravedigger. Ooh, Banefire eventually is pretty good, too. Bring back Sky Scanner. Yes. Replace Sky Scanner. 
draw disperse. Okay. So let's see. Right now we can burn my opponent for eight. They're draining us for two a turn though. We would really really need to get like a a gin of wishes or something online to be able to get my opponent or a sleep. Sleep should do it. Okay. Sleep off the top. Not quite. Omen speaker's good though. We could switcheroo for like a sky scanner. Oh yeah, we're gonna put both of those on the bottom. Do not like those cards one bit. We switcheroo like a neonate. We could activate it and keep pace with my opponent. I think I kind of like us both going lower on life total though. <laughs> Do I really want to switcheroo for sky scanner? That's kind of hilariously bad. Be my opponent. No one's here. No, I think we're still got a better chance of getting something better going forward. Maybe we swing a sky scanner though and give us some room for our uh, macabre walls. All right, we're down to four and a half minutes, which is not much, too. Yep, get, get your drains on. You got me. Rest in peace, dear Sky Scanner. Regal Bloodlord. That's a pretty good card. I think we will switch through that. Okay, ooh, and we even get the Skymarsh Bloodletter to go off with it. That's pretty nice. See, so yeah, I'm gonna just trade away the Omen Speaker, I think, here. And play a Skymarch Bloodletter. Get in with our Sky Scanner. And get a bat out of the deal. That seems pretty great. My opponent has a really good black white like life gain deck though. That's the serious thing here. We have six power and flyers in the air though, with the potential to bane fire again for eight. My opponent's dead over two turns unless they can set up something here. Abraz can blow up the Skymarsh Bloodletter, and, and indeed may just do that. Well, my opponent is very close to dead. Opponent may be debating attacks. I don't think they have anything particularly good here. Okay, come in with the house. Okay, so we go like block, and block, and I guess we could trade away the bat. Do I want to like double block the Skeleton Archer? If my opponent does, they get to shoot something. Could just take three. Maybe that's not so bad. Just trade those away. Keep all of our flyers in the air. Okay. Problem is with double blocking there is they just have the explosive apparatus that interacts pretty favorably about any with anything else we could be doing. Okay. Ooh, sleep. Yeah, I think we just go for it, right? We sleep my opponent. We can probably disperse whatever they play, and then Banefire will let us kill them the turn after. Ooh, my opponent unwilling to play anything? That's kind of scary. I don't think it changes our line. If they had like double three twos, I guess, maybe that's bad. Okay, yeah, it's murder's fine. And they're gonna blow up like Skymarsh Bloodletter. Does that only take four? Okay, they only take four. So they go down to 11 here, and again, we can disperse whatever my opponent plays, and then Banefire should finish the job. So they have two blockers. So let's see, we can bane fire for eight still. We only need to get two in. Mm, I think we actually need to disperse still and hope we draw a land. It's kind of a long shot. That's just enough for my opponent to stay alive, potentially. Come on, land. Okay, we swing with everything. Oh, and we're just gonna get tragically close here, I think. One goes down to, oh no, they do go to eight. Oh, we got him. Sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Tragically close is not enough. I was already thinking about, okay, we macabre waltz, we get back like the Skymarch Bloodletter, go for it, but we have exacts easier. All right, now we just have to win a game in three minutes. Can we do it? Who knows? We were pretty fast in that last game, although not three minutes fast. Don't think we're changing anything. Let's run it back. That was a pretty clutch sleep and a pretty clutch bane fire. All right, three minutes and counting, three minutes and counting. Can we go the distance? Uh, good hand here. I think we're going to go ahead and keep it. It's a little bit slow, but we have two of our really power cards. And again, my bonus actually was a little bit more aggressive than I thought it was, but I think this isn't bad either. Yeah, Omen Speaker, great draw off the top. Plus, mulligans take time. We ain't got time for that. Neonate Plenty, I'm probably just draining us. Another lands, just fine. Our Omen Speaker. And I think we're okay with both of those. Let's put the Bloodletter on, I guess the Salvager on top, and the Bloodletter on top of that. 
So we can get the blood letter down in our next turn. Then we have Gin of Wishes. We can Lich's Caress away something a little bit later and then bring it back with our uh, Salvager of Secrets. Okay, Sky Scanner's a fine card. Play our Skymarsh Bloodletter and pass. Restabilize life totals at 20 and 20. <laughs> so we're not going to have a good play this next turn, but we've got power on its way. Militia Bugler. That's a good card. Omen Speaker does block it fairly well, but my opponent's really likely to hit with their dag. Shield Mare. Okay. Good card, good card. Okay. Let's get in with our Bloodletter. And pass the turn. Imagine my opponent's just going to start trading 2 damage for 1, rather than use the Sky Scanner, but we will play our Gin of Wishes, and hopefully my opponent doesn't have one of their removal spells. Sure. Um, looks like they're missing on their third land again. They have not had a whole lot of luck when it comes to that. Yeah, let's play Gin of Wishes. So my opponent can swing with the Militia Bugler and plan on using the explosives, but I can't really block that anyway, so let's do this. With Lich's Crest to gain us some life and sleep still, I think we can go the distance, even if we're taking a little bit of extra damage along the way here. We do need to, do need to find another Swamp for Lich's Crest, I guess. It's a little bit of a downside. Opponent is bricking on lands, though. We could go sleep next turn, and then hit my opponent for seven. He'll probably use the Explosive Apparatus to kill off the Blood Letter somewhere along the line. So I'm not sure we have quite enough to go for sleep immediately. But if we have no good other play next turn, maybe we would. Uh, do we want to trade... I think we're just going to block the Militia Bugler and take three. My opponent really wants to use the Apparatus to get through. That's okay. okay killing off our Sky March Blood Letter. Seems super solid. Well, with yet another sleep, I really don't hate this, actually. We're just going to sleep my opponent until the end of the game. So we go for five. Next turn, we swing for another four. Um, they haven't untapped yet. And then I guess we sleep again, Salvager. Or we could just wish with the Djinn and still wait a turn. Played an island already. I think we're just sleeping. I think this is going to work. Swing with them both. Right now, if they find like Lich's Crest and a couple of islands for the Djinn, they could maybe get us. But I think that the tempo is... I mean, we're just going to keep my opponent from blocking turn after turn, and Djinn of Wishes, I think, can get there. Okay, Surge Mare. Oh, I, did, I forget about Sealed Shield Mare gaining them some life. Yeah, it's still okay, though. Okay, we switch a Rue for like Sky Scanner, maybe? Don't think we're taking Shield Mare. But I actually don't hate taking the switcheroo target. Well, no, maybe we want to wait on that. Maybe we play the salvager at this point and get back sleep. Okay. Get back sleep. Pass back to my opponent. Next turn we get to sleep, and then the turn after that we get to sleep. <laughs> Turns out three sleeps in a row is pretty good, guys. Pretty good. My opponent maybe just needs to find black, though. If they can kill Jenna Wishes, all of our plans come to ruin. But... We've only got 55 seconds, we gotta make the most of this. Okay, what's my opponent's plan here? Just getting in fairly aggressively. That is 8 damage, I don't think I care. <laughs> I think we're just gonna take it here. I guess we can block with the Omen Speaker, not lose too much. I guess we'll do that, but other than that, nothing else. Opponent plays something here, we sleep it. Or they could just leave up for the neonate, but yeah, I think you just want to play another threat. A skeleton archer kill the omen speaker. Fair enough. It does cut down our damage ever so slightly. I don't think it's enough though. Okay, we swing for six. We want macabre waltz. I actually don't hate that, although getting switcheroo for something out of the way isn't bad. And I'm not sure. I don't think I have time to figure it out. Okay, and now assuming they don't hit exactly Lich's Crest, I think we got him. Okay, Harpy is not enough. Woo, man, we won. 26 seconds left. Heck of a game. Sleep's a good card. <laughs> sleeps for days, sleeps for days. 
Ooh, ooh, man, that was close, guys. It was a long game, but we managed to win the match despite some pretty egregious misplays on our part. But thanks along for the ride. I hope it was fun to watch. It was fun to play, even if it was horrifyingly terrible. I am next to positive they had a Lich's Crest in their hand and just could not find the swamp there. And the fact that they've drawn like their entire deck kind of indicates something similar to me. But cool, we got there. Better to be lucky than good. All right, welcome back for match two. Turns out we were the very last game, very last match playing, which is not real surprising since I went almost to time. Oh, we've won the dice roll. We have, I think, a pretty okay hand here. Got that sweet double sleep again. Let's go ahead and keep. Uh, let's hope that I, uh, I can finish this game a little bit faster than the, the last one, but... Do need to hit some lands here, but if we don't, Vampire Neonate does a pretty good job of stalling for time, and Gene of Wishes will... Do a fairly good job of getting us back in the game, I think. Okay, hit a land. Happy for that. Let's go ahead and F6. Do need to remember to play or to utilize Vampire Neonate at the end of my opponent's turn. Which is a time sink on its own. Ooh, white green. And playing Diamond Mare. Hmm. That's usually a card you're most happy with if you got some life gain synergies. Which white can have, but green is less likely. What color is green? I mean, that can just be a considerable amount of life gain over the course of a game, too. Okay, we're going to play Submerged Boneyard, because we don't have anything better to do with our lands this turn. And just pass back. Definitely need to wait at least until after combat to use our Vampire Neonate. Ooh, Talons of Wildwood. Alright. Opponent going off here. No good attacks just yet. Hmm, it's kind of scary, though. We may end up, like, switcherooing for that at some point. I still don't think we play, like, a sleep or anything. We'll just pass and use our Neonate. But then we'll get Gin of Wishes up in the air next turn. And if we give my opponent a Vampire or Neonate, it's not, like, fantastic or anything. Wait, can I not block this? Oh, there we go. I was like, why can't we block? Okay. Blocking. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Rabbit bite to finish the job. Fair enough. Okay, I'm not unhappy to get that out of my opponent's hand right now. Like, that's a pretty quality removal spell that they used on a Neonate. This card is way overperformed, and I think it's even better in Sealed than it is in Draft. Okay, let's get our Jin up in the air. Hopefully they don't have a good answer for it. They didn't seem to have a great way to get rid of the Neonate, so... Hopefully they can't do anything with this either. We do still have Switcheroo. We don't have an expendable creature at this point. Like, giving my opponent my Djinn of Wishes is really just not an option. But we're probably going to start activating the Djinn next turn. That's good. No Electrify? No! Alright. Well, we'll take our Licks. Can't do too much about that, unfortunately. Ooh, our Guardian's pretty good, though. Go ahead and play that here. If we find a blue creature in any short amount of time, that'll get to start getting in as well. Opponent's playing a... Looks like a true three color deck. It's funny, they played the most planes, but we actually haven't seen any planes cards. I want to swing at the Gearsmith Guardian. My opponent wants to block, we'll see if we can't do the, the same trick with the Skeleton Archer as they pulled on us. This does give my opponent the potential to get a Talons back, and I'm not really unhappy with Talons on Diamond Mare there, but it also clears up the board, potentially lets us start getting in for damage, so. I think that's okay. If we can get my opponent down like to 10 or so, then when Frilled Sea Serpent comes into play, it's a real kind of scary threat. Okay, that's pretty good. So my opponent's going to get to utilize the, the talents again, draw a card. Turns into a 3-3 and kind of stops us from attacking. We could like pull the sleep sleep shenanigans again. Hmm. I kind of want to get the Frilled Sea Serpent to play first though. Am I okay trading away the Skeleton Archer? Probably. I don't think my opponent's going to trade away the Skeleton Archer, so I think we're fine with that. Yeah. Now we played the Frill Sea Serpent, and we can probably just ride these sleeps to victory. You know, I was grumbling a little bit in the last match that my opponent had things like Murder, or some of like the really premier cards, but we do have two copies of Sleep, and... It's actually a card that gets better in multiples, because the tempo hit when you're on offense is pretty astounding, but if you get to play two back-to-back, -back, it's really, really hard for any, like, ordinary board state not to lose it for you then. 
Like, if my opponent doesn't kill one of our threats, we're just killing them here. Like, the game is almost over. Yeah, okay, Luminous Bonds is good, though. Okay, they get to draw a card. We could switcheroo that and give it to my opponent. Or we can just sleep, go for it, sleep, go for it. Ooh, okay. Rabbit Bite makes that play less good. Should we take the Cider Enchanter? Definitely could. Just switcheroo it for the Sea Serpent. It potentially keeps my opponent from drawing extra free cards, lets the Gearsmith Guardian get in this turn, and again makes Sleep, I think, much, much more likely to kill my opponent. Well, I kind of like this. Wing North. Oh, I guess it does turn off the Gearsmith Guardian, though. That's true. It makes it a lot smaller because we don't have a blue source anymore. Eh, that's true. I hadn't considered that, that outcome. Hmm. Daybreak Chaplain on its own may still not be enough, but we potentially have turned off my opponent's source of card advantage, which feels pretty good, too. So we Lich's Crest swing, or we just sleep swing, and then Lich's Crest potentially a bigger threat. My opponent has removal for one of these effects, it gets worse. But I think this is actually still okay. Six damage is still six damage. My opponent's kind of been acting like they're flooding. So get in for damage, and hopefully finish off this game similar to how we finished our last game, but with a lot more time on the clock. You guys are going to get tired of sleep by the time I'm done playing it here. And we could just Banefire. Uh, do we want to show my opponent Banefire or another sleep? I, hmm, we've already shown them one sleep, and Banefire attacks from a completely different angle, so I guess we'll just sleep again here. We could also Lich's Crest and not let them show the second one. This is all assuming we can get in for two hits next turn, although I guess sleep's a little bit better at getting through multiple creatures in Lich's Crest, so maybe we should just do that. Maybe that feels best. We Lich's Crest that away, get in for some damage, hopefully get there. Alright, my opponent agrees. So, a green, red, white, auras kind of removal deck. Totally lost is probably good. Probably don't need any of those. Have normal endurance is maybe fine. Not sure we want to bring in Cobalt number two. I'm not sure it's quite that slow. Do we need like Field Creeper? Probably not. What seems bad in this matchup? Switcheroo seems good, Exclusion Mage seems good, Disperse seems good. Pretty much everything seems okay. Maybe Explosive Apparatus under underperforms some. Most of the stuff they showed us had three toughness there, and they're going to be equipping up larger threats. Maybe we cut the Explosive Apparatus. Yeah, it seems okay. Okay, and uh, another pretty okay hand here. We've got lands, we've got Anticipate, hopefully to find us a little bit of action. Let's go ahead and keep. We've got Sleep and Banefire, those are our win conditions, so... Can't be that bad, right? Okay, well, we've hit five lands, which is starting to get on the, the top end of what we want to see. Daybreak Chaplain, fair enough. Okay, well, Totally Lost is nice to deal with potential auras a little bit later. Uh, do we want another Sleep, another Skeleton Archer, or a Sky Scanner? Sky Scanner's tempting just because it draws us a card, but I don't know if it actually does all that much either. We could just take Skeleton Archer. Sky Scanner is a little bit more likely to draw us into like a perfect curve, because we can play that next turn than turn after. Sky Scanner also represents a couple of points of damage in the air in this matchup. I think Skeleton Merger might just be better. I also should have waited until the end of my opponent's turn to see what they'd played. That was a little bit of a mistake, but I don't know quite why I was so happy to play the Anticipate main, main phase there. Because what my opponent plays could end up changing which one we want as well, but still in the mode of play fast, I guess. Okay, so opponent plays Explosive Apparatus, and it's cracking in. No land. Okay, we hit another land that we're not really happy about, but we're only taking one a turn. I guess it's kind of two because of the lifelink, like, <laughs> depends on how you look at it, I guess. Pegasus Corsair. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, we found a mountain for Banefire, which is actually pretty nice. We're going to Skeleton Archer just to get something on the battlefield here, and we can start hitting my opponent back. 
but we're not getting any value out of this, just shooting my opponent's face. So they look like they're, wait, they're playing blue? Oh, they just sideboarded their deck. Okay, so they're not probably not playing green with the auras anymore. Okay, yeah, I maybe should have recognized that just a second earlier than I did there. So we got into 16, my opponent builds back up to 22. Skymarch Bloodletters, pretty good draw. Uh, we could totally lost and try and get value out of that. Eh, I guess Explosive Apparatus gets dunked on by the Explosive App or dunks the Bloodletter pretty hard. I think we still just need to get into play though. I think I'll get something better than a or something better for a totally lost target at some point. Yeah, this lets my opponent use their mana efficiently, which is kind of unfortunate because I'm pretty sure they're happy with that trade. Yeah. Maybe I should have totally lost. They're stuck on mana. That potentially keeps them off a of mana source again. Oh, Tank Vengeance. Okay. Well, uh, we need to find a threat. <laughs> um, are we playing totally lost to deny my opponent draw? Ugh. I mean, they're stuck on mana, which makes it much more of a consideration than it would be usually. Yeah, I guess I do. Maybe I should have waited and done that earlier. Or uh, instead of done that instead of the, the blood letter a couple turns ago. Yeah, my opponent's just going to redraw. They get in for one point of damage. But that kind of, I mean, it's like a really bad time walk, kind of. Because they can't do anything else with their mana. It's a time walk that we took one damage from. Yeah, there's Mind Rot. Sure. I'll keep uh, attacking my opponent's hand, I guess, as best we can. Still don't think we're sleeping. Don't really want to bind Banefire just for the Pegasus Courser. Maybe we should. Hey, got rid Okay, then no, they're just like legit playing all the colors here. Yeah, I still don't want Banefire. I think we're going to have bigger fish to fry than these two. Even though they are, they are the immediate threats. Okay, yeah, opponent found green. Okay, another land. Oops, almost F6 to the turn there. Hopefully did not, yeah. Fortunately, my opponent didn't, did not F6 immediately. Yeah, it just feels so bad to Banefire at this point. I think I'm still just going to wait. I mean, we can get back with Salvager of Secrets eventually, potentially. We're still only taking three damage a turn. I don't know. Maybe we should. Okay, see, we'd much rather get rid of Seder Enchanter. My opponent's going to get to draw a card off of it, but we do get to get it off the battlefield, which is nice. Oh, oh I guess that's true. They don't really want to target Seder Enchanter. I was thinking of it in terms of like the, ooh, so we get to Banefire and get it back. Nice. The dream. Just going to do this for two. Play the Salvager of Secrets. Get back Banefire. Maybe kill the Pegasus Courser along the way. Yeah, Salvager of Secrets is a good draw. Still taking three this next turn in the air. My opponent's slowly, finally getting all their lands together. Elf Rejuvenator is a big part of that. So yeah, my opponent's playing a pretty precarious mana base. Maybe they just had a really tough sealed pool. Sometimes you gotta do that, like... Sometimes you just don't have very good cards. My opponent gains a little bit more life. Sure. Exclusion Mage bounces the Daybreak Chaplain. We Banefire the Courser. I think we're getting to that point where we got to do that sort of a thing. Okay. Exclusion Mage bounce Mr. Chaplain. Banefire kill off the Courser. Uh, is there anything? Eh, I'm just gonna tap out here. I don't know of anything that would save it here, but no real reason not to just overkill. My opponent knows we can't play anything then, but it's not that big a deal. It's funny, my opponent didn't draw like any lands and now has drawn only lands for like multiple turns here. They bring back talons. They're just equipping up talons and attacking. That's like that's good for them, but it's not that big of a deal either. Oh, we'll rabbit bite. Okay. <laughs> we'll take our hits. Uh, are we sleeping yet? No, I don't think so. We have enough mana that we can play two things next turn. Seeing if they play a threat here, we can sleep and wait. <laughs> this has been a derpy, derpy game for both of us. They had a pretty bad draw, and we just have not found action. Okay, well, sleep it is.
Looks a lot less good when we're not killing my opponent with it. Maybe they play like Colossal Dreadmon. Maybe we draw something cheap and go to Switcheroo? Question mark. And Gearsmith Guardian holds down the fort, I guess. Not really something we want to switcheroo around, but. Okay, Omen Speaker though. Not not as unhappy trading Omen Speaker away. And the Scry 2 is pretty nice here. Oh yeah. Both on the bottom. Do not want to see those guys. Let's swing for five. My opponent gets in for one. That's just a bad trade. Let's see. Lich's Crest is really the only like. Oh no, that's not that's not true. We still have the vampire neonate potentially too. Oh man, Omen Speaker, you failed me. Uh my opponent's the only color mode they do not seem to be playing as black, so I don't think there's any reason to. Hold up lands. We're just going to get to play the Jin of Wishes at some point, and wish like twice immediately. <laughs> what even is this game? My opponent's just flooded like incredibly badly now. Let's see, we've seen, there's only four, four more lands in the top 13 cards, no, top 15 cards. <laughs> alright, alright, fine. I get the point. On the other hand, my opponent's not really doing anything either, so... Okay, giant spider. I guess maybe we switch through that. We really want to hit just not a land here. But cobwalls. Oh, that's a reason to hold a land, isn't it? Oops. Yeah, you're right. We, we should have been holding that from a cobwalls. So we did have that one in the get deck. But this is actually pretty good. We can cobwalls bring back salvager and exclusion age. We could actually even not play switcheroo. Interesting. So we, we play Macabre Waltz, bring back Salvager, pitch something else, play the Salvager, get back Macabre Waltz, and then we can start going after that. We switch a roof for the Giant Spider. My opponent still doesn't have great attacks. Or we Macabre Waltz, bring back Salvager. We've got 12 mana. Play Salvager, bring back Macabre Waltz. Switch a roof the Salvager. No, we want to kill off the Salvager. Ideally from a cobalt's value. Switch through the salvager for the giant spider. We've we're left with Man, I really don't know what the play is here. <laughs> so we've got 12 mana. <laughs> we have a cobalt's. We bring back salvager. We bring back anything else. Anything else that exciting. Love letter's fine. I think I'd rather have switcheroo though. Illusion Mage is also fine. Again, I think I'd rather have switcheroo. We play Macabalds, bring back salvager. Have those just in play. Bring back Macabre's Waltz with Salvager. Next turn plan I'm playing. We want to get Banefire eventually, but I think... Okay, I think I like this, actually. So let's get back Skymarch Bloodletter and Salvager of Secrets with the intent of pitching the Skymarch Bloodletter. <laughs> yeah, if we kept a land in our hand, this would be a lot better, for sure. I should have, should have played around that a little bit better. Play Salvager. Have an extra blocker. Get back Macabre Waltz. And now, now, see, I was pointing out earlier we had no lands left in the deck. Oh my goodness, it's going to punish us absolutely. Okay, we have two pretty good cards. Um, We can start swinging with Salvager of Secrets if we get another blocker, because my opponent just can't block it or we get value with Macabre Waltz. It's kind of funny, too. Uh-oh, this looks big. Oh, this looks... Uh-oh, they have, like, a massive Bane Fire. That would be pretty funny. This is, like, the biggest Bane Fire ever. Hungering Hydra for 12. Oh, it's going to be mine. That's so awesome. <laughs> My opponent's like, oh, yeah, we got you. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's cool, bro. It's cool. <laughs> oh, and we drew the swap for maximum blowout. Oh, this feels so good. This must be what it's like to, to know that you're doing good things with your life. Oh, this feels so good. Um... Okay, so we steal the Hungering Hydra, we give my opponent an Omen Speaker. We swing with the Salvager of Secrets first, maybe? To try and get it into Macabwald's land. My opponent maybe would make it bigger? Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, this feels so good. Okay, swing with the Salvager. Oh, my opponent will just block with the Daybreak Chaplain, won't they? Oh yeah, I guess we just gave him an extra point of life. Come on, get greedy. Ah, okay. So we switcheroo Omen Speaker? Yeah, I guess so. Switcheroo Omen Speaker for Hungering Hydra. I want to use up more red than that. Omen Speaker for Hydra. 
one, one, two, three. We're only gonna need one black source, although again, let's play it, play it cool. Let play it cool here. I wanna make sure I have enough mana for everything. Hungering Hydra's mine. Excellent. Play Macabwalds. Bring back Exclusion Mage and the Sky March Bloodletter. Pitch a Swamp. Discard that. Play Sky March Bloodletter. Or do we want to get Exclusion Mage into play? Actually, maybe one more blocker is more important. Because we did swing at the Sky Marcher or the Bloodletter. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Okay, so we play Exclusion Mage. We bounce the Omen Speaker, replay Omen Speaker. Seems pretty good. That's true. Maybe we should have done that a little bit differently. There were a couple of good options there. And those both seem good. I'm going to put Lich's Crest on top. So let's put Disperse on top and then Lich's Crest on top. I think we're going to be hard pressed to lose this game now, actually. Sleep still does it. My phone's got sleep. We are at two life. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong. We have a really big Hydra. Oh my goodness, that hand was so cool. Okay, we Sky March Bloodletter. And go our life total up by 50%. I think we swing at the Hungering Hydra and maybe also Gearsmith. My opponent wants to triple block on the Gearsmith. We get to get rid of one creature. Only one though. I guess we can get rid of these two and leave Giant Spider into play. That actually gets us out of sleep territory. That seems okay to me. Swing with both. And my opponent got super flooded this game too. Do I want to just Lich's Caress and get up higher on life total? I think with the Disperse available next game, or next turn, that might be good enough. Hmm. We still have four blockers. They'd have to get through with two of their threats or have something big. I think I still want to keep Lich's Caress more. I mean, if they have like a prodigious growth or something, they can still kill us. Maybe we should have taken Disperse first, so we'd have something at instant speed. If we weren't going to use Lich's Caress here, maybe that's better. Okay, opponent pain costs. Hopefully for nothing exciting. Come on, just a regular draw. Give it to me. Every draw master. Sure. So they put it on the Rejuvenator. We do have to remember this has Trample. Okay. My opponent, like, makes any sort of... Ooh, Sigiled Sword. That's actually kind of scary. Are we dead now? That's six. We have to put that plus one other thing in front. We chump block, chump block. Ooh, that's that's kind of... Oh, and it's another attacker? I think they kill us, actually. Oh, man, we should have Lich's Crest. Are we dead? Okay. Yep, you make a 2-2. Two -two. If we don't die this turn... So we block like that... Block like that, block like that. We only end up taking one then. Block over there, take two, right? We're not quite dead. That dies, we get to disperse the Cavalry Drillmaster, we win. One gets to get in for one point of damage. Man, that's actually insanely close. That's pretty scary. Probably should have Lich's Crest, but we go to one, right? Wow, man, my opponent was so close, even with the... Awesome play. Oh, that's true. Elvish Rejuvenator doesn't die, though, because it's first striking. But we still have Lich's Crest plus a bounce, so it should be enough. Ooh, that was scary. Um, there's nothing that changes this here, right? We just blow this up. Go back up to four for what that's worth. Disperse that. Hit my opponent for a lot. Yeah, maybe we should have Lich's Crest last turn, or put the Disperse on top. All right, we got there. Man, the Hungering Hundred Hydra turned against its owner. That felt pretty sweet. That was a fun match. Again, I don't think we were uh, mistake-free, but that was a fun match. I'll see you guys for match three. Welcome back for match three. Our opponent took just a little bit coming into the matchup here, and unfortunately we have to mulligan, but they did too, so not a big deal. And this hand is solid. It's a little bit slow, but again, it's sealed. I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and keep it. We have Gin of Wishes, which is one of our best cards in our deck. Uh, I think we'll keep Explosive Apparatus. I think that's likely to be able to trade for something, and we may not have too much to do in the first couple of turns, so... Explosive Apparatus seems solid. Ooh, yeah, especially if my opponent's playing stuff like Leon and Vanguard. I think I want that. Okay. Let's try, start off with our Apparatus. 
wouldn't say no to something like an omen speaker here too. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have the dream draw of like goblins here. Okay, looks like it is just a life gain deck. The omen vanguard I think can be playable in that deck, but often isn't all that exciting, especially on a mulligan. Like if my opponent doesn't have a follow up here, it's gonna be kind of tough. Okay, yeah. If they have a, another creature next turn, they do get to go off and get in for two points of damage and gain a life, which is... That's trying to add up, add up to a real card. Skeleton Archer is going to be able to kill off Leon and Vanguard in a couple of turns, so we'd probably rather not use Explosive Apparatus on it if we can avoid it. Looks like my opponent doesn't have a follow-up two drop or they would have played it there. Ooh, so I could play Neonate instead of the Explosive Apparatus. I actually don't hate that. Like I said, I don't really want to use the apparatus on the Vanguard when Skeleton Archer will probably get the job done on its own. Neonate blocks fairly well. It's not as mana efficient, but I think I want the explosive apparatus later in the game. And since we're guaranteed to have Skeleton Archer next turn, I think this is okay. Obviously would have rather played the, the Neonate sometime earlier. Could have maybe got in for a couple of or a point of life drain here, but won't, won't complain too much. So my opponent does seem to be on a three-color deck list here. Probably splashing for blue, given their first two cards. Probably for something fairly good. Since I think the life gain deck wants synergy more than a lot of other effects. Like, a lot of decks I think, like this one, can splash. It's kind of like, yeah, whatever. But since they're so highly synergistic, at least ideally, a splash I think hurts you a little bit more. So if they have a combat trick here, oh well. Looks like they probably don't. Yeah, Leon and Vanguard was not exceptional that game. Next turn we'll plan on playing Gin of Wishes and start making some wishes. If they have removal for it, that's a little bit unfortunate. But we still do have Explosive Apparatus to deal with a little threat, and we can start trading life with my opponent's Neonate effectively here too. Ooh, all right, Tezzered. Okay, that, that's the card for it. Tezzered's pretty solid. So they create a Thopter. Hmm. So this creates Thopters and draws a card. If you control three or more artifacts, they draw two. And there's an emblem for nine at the beginning of your end steps, which is for a permanent card on the battlefield. Okay. So realistically, this is just a great draw engine. Tezzeret's really strong. It's a reason to splash for sure. Double blue is kind of hard. I wonder if they just are like a strict two-color deck. So I could play Sleep here, but it actually doesn't even answer the threat all that well. So I think we're going to play Gene of Wishes and have to try and beat our way through the, the army of Thopters to get to Tezzeret. Although Sleep does enable that fairly well. If my opponent can't kill the Jin here, uh, it's not impossible that we, we get to Sleep next turn and get through and finish off the Planeswalker. It will have been good value at that point, but it's not as bad as it could have been either. I should have swung first. This gives my opponent a little bit more consideration on whether they maybe want to keep up the Thopter to block Gin of Wishes. Uh, yeah, just a mistake there. Okay, opponent taking Tesseract down to three. Hopefully, don't have Lich's Caress. That would get us pretty good. Okay, making a Thopter. No Caress, no Caress, no tapping five mana. Oh, Horizon Scholar. Okay, so we do get to kill Tesseract. That's pretty good there, but. Getting Tezzeret off the battlefield is nice. So my opponent got like good good value there. Definitely got them into a game that they were not looking particularly good in otherwise. But we're going to be able to kind of even up the score here. No, and even have Anticipate to follow it up. Seems okay. Could use the tap effect, but I think I'd rather just sleep. Let's sleep my opponent. Crack in for three points of damage. Kill off Tezzeret. And then anticipate the end of my opponent's next turn. Maybe anticipate or play something with the Jinn of Wishes. So attack Tezzeret, attack opponent. Ooh, man, this is a card. I feel like a lot of people have said Tezzeret's the best card in the set. That's actually the first time I've seen it. And it seemed pretty good there. We had a pretty parsimonious answer, but... Uh-oh, this looks pretty big though too. Another Horizon Scholar would wreck us. Okay, Epicure of Blood is good, not, not broken. Mostly the synergy with the Vampire Neonate's a little bit awkward for us. Let's anticipate. 
Salvager of Secrets to get back sleep. That seems okay. Don't think we want to grab more lands necessarily. Let's just do that. If we find Banefire exactly, maybe we'd be unfortunate with that. Um, let's activate our Gin of Wishes, I think, very first and see what we find. We'll play Wall of Mist to block. Potentially otherwise, yeah, I guess we'll play it. Yeah, I guess get in for four in the air. On the other hand, can we afford to do that? I don't want to trade away the Djinn for the Horizon Scholar, but we're kind of falling apart here. Next turn we take six, seven, eight damage, we go down to eight. In the turn, then we play like Salvager Secrets, like trade off. Doesn't feel real great. How are we winning this game? We're winning this game probably off of leveraging Sleep with Salvager of Secrets. Or maybe finding something like Lich's Crest off the top with the Djinn. I think we need to swing with the Djinn. I don't think I want to trade with it just yet. We potentially take a lot of damage next turn, though. I guess we let in two points with the Thopters. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't. Play our Wall of Mist. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We Leaving it back doesn't mean we had to block with Ryzen Scholar. Maybe we're happier blocking two Thopters. Stupid Tezzeret. Taking an easy breezy six here. Reassembling skeleton. Okay, well, Gina Bushes is gonna have to do some serious work here. Ooh, Lich's Crest. Great, great draw. I think we're gonna not utilize the Gina Bushes for a round just so we can take care of the Horizon Scholar. The three life here is pretty big deal, too. Okay, kill off Horizon Scholar. In with the Gin again. And I feel like we're right back in this game. Top decking, like Premier Removal, definitely does that for you. Yeah, that was a great draw. <laughs> really can't say enough, enough nice things about that. Okay, we go down to 11 here from the sweet Vampire plus uh, Epicure combo. I hope I'm saying that right. Epicure, I've never actually heard that word. Look at it. Magic. Helping out vocabularies and math skills. Teach your kids. Bring them into the fold. Uh, okay. So Vampire Nene will buy back a point of life here. We're going down to nine off the Thopters. My opponent's still thinking they can race. They're doing three damage a turn to us. We're doing four to them. We can maybe use Explosive Apparatus at some point, and then Salvager Secrets into Sleep maybe gets there too. Again, any like removal, any solid card to deal with our Jin gets my opponent right back into the game, but... Ooh, Switcheroo. I don't know if that's actually all that good for us. Switcheroo is powerful. I don't know if it's all that good for us. We may want to Salvager here and prep for Sleep. My, or take my opponent down to 7, they go back up to 8, down to 7. We have Lethal with Sleep, unless they've got something. That's probably better than the average thing we'll draw off Jin of Wishes, even though the value is not quite as good. I guess we can switch Rue the turn after to get rid of, like, a blocker, maybe? But that's not going to matter, I don't think. Okay, let's swing with our Jin. See if my opponent has some sort of crazy interaction. Okay, down to seven. Play our Salvager. We also get back Lich's Crest. That's a little bit safer. My opponent's going to go up to eight. Let's say they kill the Jin next turn. We swing with both of these, then Explosive Apparatus kills them still, right? So they're only going to get... I guess they could get two triggers, but then stuff still sleep, sleeps. What comes back to my turn? We neonate. I think we're okay to grab sleep here and just go for a slightly faster victory. It is maybe close, but I think it's okay. I would not begrudge anyone for taking Lich's Crest there and just playing it safe, though. But I think even if the worst case scenario occurs and the Gen of Wishes dies, on the other hand, if it's dying, it's probably Delicious Caress, which the extra three life would be a pretty big deal. Yeah, maybe we should have just gotten back to Caress. I like that it gives my opponent one less draw, but that may have been bad. I'm just getting in with one Thopter. I can't do too much about that. It's possible they have like a Cancel in hand. Which case sleep doesn't do it, but it still wouldn't be bad. Okay, use our vampire neonate. We cast sleep, or at least try to. We walk into counter magic. Oh well, but otherwise I think we've just got my opponent. Okay, the drain in response. Sure. 
Everything else taps. Uh, let's go for lethal. Is there anything at instant speed that gets us, especially? Flash blocker, maybe? Looks like my opponent doesn't have anything. Okay, managed to pick up game one. So, blue, white, black, life game shenanigans. I'm surprised by how many players are trying to play three colors. It has worked fairly well for them, but it does add in some extra variants. Uh, what do we like out of this deck? It's likely to not be super, super aggressive. So we could take out things like Wall of Mist, maybe, although it does answer the Epicure fairly well. Apparatus seemed okay that game. They probably are playing things like Sky March Bloodletter if they have it, or Snapping Drake, too. Totally Lost doesn't seem fantastic. I kind of want to make room for another Macabre Waltz. This one didn't show us tons of removal. Maybe we just run this back? Hmm. I feel like there's something that seems bad here. Even if it's just like Frilled Sea Serpent. Although I like having that top end, too. I think Macabre Waltz is... Potentially going to be very important in this matchup, though. We take the walls, let Wall of Mist go. Hope we have something else that can effectively block the Epicure. Alright, I think that's good. Let's run this back. Okay, opponent went down to the wire on sideboarding. That might mean that they completely swap decks on us. In which case, maybe we'll be unhappy having the Wall of Mist over the Macabre Waltz. But we have Omen Speaker, which is nice. Our only real, like... 2 drop, 2 drop. One is mulligan to 6, we are not going to mulligan, this hand's quite good. And then keeps at 6 and puts a card on top. So I'll probably still have a pretty good game here. They okay, still got an island going on over there. Pretty hard to believe you'd sideboard away from Tezzeret. But it's possible the rest of their deck looks a little bit different now. Blue-white. Okay, Omen Speaker this next turn. Seems solid. We actually have like... Kind of a reasonable curve, especially if we somehow manage to trade away the Omen Speaker or something to get value off the Grave Digger. We want a Mountain. Do we want Macabre Waltz? Macabre Waltz is worse when we have a Grave Digger in hand. Mountain is good eventually, like we want that at some point. And getting Frilled Sea Serpent out on time, I guess, has some upside. So I guess we'll put the Mountain on top, Macabre Waltz on bottom, maybe. Just maybe try and find a little bit more action along the way. No plays for my opponent so far. Yeah, I mean, I guess we will swing with our Omen Speaker. I don't think there's anything that really punishes us terribly here. If they want to, like, destroy target tap creature or something, that's fine. Play our Mountain. Play our Sky March Bloodletter. Kind of hope this dies on some level. <laughs> Not real likely. And that's only because I want to get value out of Grave Digger. We just won't play it if we don't have something good to do next turn. Even Wind Mage. Oh, great. Yeah, my opponent trades this away. That is the peak of value. Okay. So with both. Come on, trade. I know you want to trade. Come on, trade, 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 trade. Yes! <laughs> the blowout. <laughs> no one expects the Grave Digger. I feel like we need one of those sick, like, uh, commentator overlays where... Uh, what, what overlay is the wrong word? Um, just like a narrator in a TV show and saying that it was then that Flemset knew they had made a mistake. Fountain of Renewal. Fine card. It actually is likely to gain my opponent a lot of life since we're in a pretty slow matchup. I think that this is another card that I originally kind of looked at and I was like, ah, it's kind of trash. But since the format's often pretty slow, the life gain can be pretty big, and being able to cash in for a card is good. There are times you play this against like a controlling deck that's going to gain you 12 life, and against a control and against an aggressive deck, it might still gain you like six, which is like not nothing. Let's play our Skymarsh Bloodletter. Next turn we'll have a Frilled Sea Serpent. We're, getting, we're curving out pretty well, and looks like my opponents had a, a rough draw here. The fact they missed a land last turn is definitely tough. They may have to crack this to find their next land drop, in which case we're pretty far ahead, especially with the switcheroo and sleep in hand to finish the job. I can say that we've been very, very lucky in this sealed. We haven't played perfectly. The draws have been good off the top when we needed them to be. You gotta crack the fountain, I think, if you got no other play. And just hope to find your land drop. 
That is rough for my opponent, though. Okay, Surge Mare. That is a fine blocker. Okay, so we're going to have Frilled Sea Serpent unblockable pretty quick. And again, Sleep or Switcheroo can get in for a little bit of extra as well. So we take my opponent down to 11 here. Play the Sea Serpent. Next turn, potentially swing for 6. Or we Sleep and swing for 9. We could go for sleep and then, oh, that's true, my opponent gains one off fountain, they're going to gain at least one more. So we're up to 13. We could sleep and, okay, Iron Master's Cage. Clean answer for our Sea Serpent. That makes our sleep game plan less good. We're still beating my opponent down, but it's it's slow. Okay, play a Submerged Boneyard now. I'm going to remember to keep a land now for our second Macabre Waltz. Now the first one's all the way on the bottom of the library, so not real likely to be impactful, but... And we're getting to the point where, if my opponent can leave up mana for Surge Mare, like, we're only getting in for one point a turn, since the Fountain of Renewal undoes some of that. But we still have two very good proactive cards in our hand, we've got some good potential draws. Tezzeret would be bad. If my opponent hits and plays Tezzeret, we will weep a little bit. Although Sleep actually still... Almost answers it. I think it comes in with six loyalty, unfortunately, but opponent not playing anything there. So yeah, can't swing into the Surge Mare anymore. Guess we could switch a Rue for the Surge Mare and try and get aggressive, but I think there's gonna be better opportunities for that card. Banefare or Banefare. <laughs> Banefire is a pretty close to just a lethal play here too. But eh, I mean we've our offensive is stalled out. Not sure what my opponent has that they didn't want to play something last turn. Oh, they're probably still playing three colors, though. Yeah, I guess they're probably still playing black. Yeah, they're playing things like Leon and Vanguard. So actually, they're probably just color screwed. Okay, that is a that's a cost. So we can Lich's Crest, the Surge Mare. Hit for a fair amount here, and then Sleep probably kills my opponent next turn. Actually, do not hate that. It's a little bit aggressive with our removal, but for winning the game off of it, that's not too aggressive. Okay, opponent pause there. It's possible they were thinking about doing something like cancel, but I think if you've got it, you got to use it there. Okay, we crack in for potentially five. If my opponent like taps out this next turn, we might just sleep and go for the kill. Yeah. I guess I think we've been pretty lucky with our land draws. Our opponents have had a fair amount of problems with their mana bases, and we have so far been immune. But you gotta consider cracking the Fountain of Renewal here, especially if you don't have anything else. I think I probably would, although it's dependent on what's in your hand, but the way that my opponent's been playing makes me think that they need to hit something. But outside of removal, if they just play like Swamp, tap out for something here, sleep will probably kill them. Uh oh Psychic Symbiont. Okay. Well, I... Should have lethal here. I guess kind of glad we kept the island around to pitch. But I don't think it would have mattered, actually, even. Okay, well, Sleep claims another one. This has been our MVP so far. Letting our uh, kind of weird, derpy little creatures go the distance in a lot of cases. Man, good card. Good card. Definitely happy to have it in the pool. I was a little bit worried initially when you're building the deck. I was like, you know, our deck doesn't look that aggressive. We're a little bit more controlling. Maybe sleep will only be okay. But even on defense, it's been fine. And we've been able to use it offensively a number of times here. So cool. 3-0. The dream. So to be able to get a PTQ invitation, we have to win one of the next two games. But obviously, we're hoping to go all the way and get that sweet 5-0. See you guys for match four. All right, we are back for match four. We have a reasonable hand. I think we're going to go ahead and keep it. A little bit high on mana, but Omen Speaker hopefully will help us filter towards some more action. And Vampire Neonate doesn't work too terribly on a flooded board either, so let's play that out. All right, I got faith. We're going to take this one down, and then the next one will just be bonus round. Next one will be bonus round. Uh, Dryant Green Seeker. It's like a better version of a Vampire Neonate. Yeah, I guess it costs two mana. It would make sense that it's like twice as good. Well, another, another land's not what I'm hoping for there. All right, Omen Speaker. Well, I mean, we're going to keep Mind Rot. Do we want Disperse, actually? 
It's not a land, which makes it a little bit better, but I'm not sure that we're going to get immediate value out of a Disperse. I think I'm actually going to put that on the bottom and hope to find something that's a little bit more action-y. There will be times where you really want that card and times where it's kind of low impact, and I think it's going to be low impact with my opponent's admittedly not real aggressive start here. Okay, so Omen Speaker, which is kind of nice because they can set up the top of their library so they will draw a card. It's a green speaker, draws a forest, pretty sweet. It's Explosive Apparatus, all right. Well, do we want to play the Mind Rot or do we want a Sandbag? Kind of out of action. We Sandbag, we might still hit some bigger, better threats. I guess not much is happening. I think I'm content just to wait here. So I'll play Submerged Boneyard, we'll pass, we'll drain my opponent at the end of their turn. Centaur Courser, pretty good. Especially given that we don't really have a great way to interact with it so far. We kept a pretty land heavy hand and we're not receiving any favors from the deck for it here, but you know, Skeleton Archer is not bad. I guess it does trade for Centaur Courser. So I guess we'll play that and shoot my opponent. We're not getting any more value out of it right now, but that's all right. Triggering the Green Seeker. Come on, no free draws. Okay, didn't hit that time without the aid of the scry. And we'll just pass back. And pretty likely my opponent will play like land drop and then... No, well, maybe not. I was gonna say, we, they might be down to just two cards in hand for us to mind rot. Hmm, no play yet. Well, Banefire is another card that's good eventually. Could mind rot, my opponent doesn't have lands in their hand, they're not gonna draw a land off Green Seeker, so we are gonna hit some stuff. Kind of don't hate that. I think they're more likely to get more and more lands as the Green Seeker goes forward. I wonder if we want to try and be on the beatdown and maybe set up better for a Banefire. Like if we tr attack with the Skeleton offer, Archer and offer to trade. We also have things like Grave Digger, which make that a little bit better maybe. Let's swing at the Skeleton Archer. We'll Mind Rot my opponent and then Neonate. And you know, we're hitting my opponent then. My opponent willing to trade. It's okay with me. And let's Mind Rot. Like I said, the fact that my opponent almost certainly doesn't have lands because they missed a land drop means that we're going to get two real cards. Oh yeah, two real good cards there. Mind Rot has done some serious work for us over the course of these matches. It's a little bit scary though because that means my opponent's still got some real gas in their hand too. Uh-oh. Oh man, Tezzeret again? Oh. Oh, oops, and I have six through the, the turn there. My bad. Uh, well, I guess we'll play Macabre Waltz. We'll bring back Skeleton Archer and shoot the Thopter and at least have something going on then. It's not fantastic, but it's not atrocious. Yeah, we're behind here. Oh, man, Tezzeret again. Is there no justice? I am playing a perfectly happy, ordinary, regular old seal deck. What are people bringing in their insane planeswalkers for? Uh, Thornhide Wolves? Yeah, this is going to be a tough game for us to take down. If we draw like red off the top right now and kill Thornhide Wolves, maybe. Oof. Okay, well. We will pass back. But yeah, this is, this is looking grim. <laughs> yep. Oh, it misses on the Green Seeker, but that's okay. The deck looks pretty great here. Switcheroo and Vivian's Invocation are nice top end. So we're not going to forget to use the Vampire Neonate this time around. Got a little bit greedy with the F6s before. Although, if I had to guess, I'd say it's not going to matter this game. So, okay, activating Green Seeker after tapping mana. Sure, Scholar of Stars. Okay. To make sure they're not drawing a land of Scholar. Okay, that makes sense. Activate our Neonate. Anticipate is not a terrible draw. We're going to do a main phase because if we find action, I want to use it. Okay, so we could grab Sleep, but this doesn't actually kill Tezzeret right now. We could also get Rab Switcheroo at some point. Let's see, my opponent isn't that far away from ultimating Tezzeret, which is kind of brutal too. They just get a free best creature of all time. So I'm not sure we can really afford to wait. 
So if we sleep right now, we crack Tezzeret down to eight, or down to four. My opponent plays, next turn they almost certainly have a block, at the very least they're going to have a Thopter. So we're probably not killing Tezzeret. But we have to interact because I can't, I don't think we can allow it to ultimate. But also Lich's Caress, kill like Thornhide Wolves, and then we don't have terrible attacks. So my opponent will just trade off the Scholar of Stars on the Archer and then we can't hit anymore. And Switcheroo seems pretty bad. I guess we're grabbing Sleep. So if we take Sleep, I think we just have to go for it and kind of hope we get lucky. All right, well, we, we keep Tezra from ultimating at least immediately. But yeah, this is... this is bad. <laughs> Let's play fast here, since I'm probably going to need to go to a game three, and this match, or this deck, is played fairly slowly. And I'm just kind of a slow player, so I want to make sure we have enough time. Okay, Tezzeret making a token. No follow-up's not real likely since we... Yeah, Colossal Dreadma. And we just put our uh, Lich's Cross on the bottom. I don't know. I kind of want to concede this because I just think there's basically no way we got back in the game. But our opponent's still showing us a little bit more about the deck. I don't think I can in good conscience concede, even though the odds of our victory here are not good. <laughs> So now they can... I think I start activating Tedret for zero, probably. Yeah, although just making an army of Thopters isn't terrible, either. Sing so in for three. You don't really have great blocks against the Colossal Dreadmaw. Yeah, this is... <laughs> pretty sadly thrashed, I think, this game. Okay, yep, Green Seeker. Opponent gets a free card. And Courser. Yeah, I mean, their deck looks, like, honestly, fairly ordinary. It's got Vivian's Invocation Switcheroo, which are good, but Tezret's really been the card to beat here. I'm actually not even going to play the Explosive Apparatus. I'm not going to give my opponent any more information. I don't think it matters. Well, hmm. Okay. Thopters for days. Yeah, this is this card's pretty good. My host's not even drawing cards off of it too, which I I feel like would be arguably better. Uh, let's go ahead and block there and block there. We take ten. Or I guess we want to do that. We want to use our wall of mist appropriately. Okay, take ten. Gain one off the vampire DNA. And again, my opponent may still show us like another card or two that maybe ends up being relevant. But I think we are dead next turn. Yeah, not gonna play it. Doesn't matter. I guess technically we like chump block with that, like chump block with that. Yeah, it's not gonna matter. There's just too many Thopters in the air for us to interact with favorably here. Wanna show me one more card? You're just gonna go for lethal. I would not, uh, Begrudge you for just going for lethal. Looks like... Okay. And that's good enough for me. Good game, good game. Alright, so... Hopefully we can do something a little bit more proactive this time around. We don't have anything that is absurdly good against Tezzeret. Maybe Aether Tunnel? No one actually didn't show us anything that... interacted with that incredibly well, did they? They mostly just played creatures, they didn't really have a whole lot of interaction. Maybe Aether Tunnel and something helps us get through. Feels a little bit narrow though. Two-Headed Zombie also helps with that a little bit. I guess maybe what's better here is what seems bad. I think Switcheroo still is going to be good against a big red deck, or a big green deck rather. Mind Rot still seems solid. Explosive Apparatus didn't seem nuts, but didn't seem terrible. We could play the old Explosive Apparatus out, Macabre Waltz in trick. I do think I want Wall of Mist against a green deck. Not sure we're going to be quite grindy enough to merit a second Macabre Waltz. Maybe let's take an Aether Tunnel. This leaves us open to be two for one, but it also is a way to finish the game in the, the late game. Uh, sure. Aether Tunnel is. We'll give it a shot. It's actually the first time I've played with it in the format, and maybe I'll immediately regret it, but... I think we'll we'll give it a go. We'd like to play first. What do we think of this hand? We do not love this hand. 
We need to draw an island and probably something else in the first couple of draws. We're going first. This one didn't seem extraordinarily aggressive, but we still could just get killed by like centaur coursers. Pretty borderline, pretty borderline. I, I'm gonna keep, you guys know me, I hate mulliganing, but I cannot complain if things go poorly for us in this game, because this is pretty speculative. We need to both draw islands, which we do have more islands than swamps. We've got nine sources in the deck, which isn't terrible, but okay, well, we did hit one. So now we want to find some more action along the way. I may mind rot for curve considerations here. You obviously want to wait a little bit later, try and get something like the, the Tezzeret out of their, my opponent's hand. But if we have nothing better to do on turn three, mind rot's not terrible. Opponent put two on top with Omen Speaker. So my opponent's likely to have a good play next turn and a good play after that. Yeah, I think I'm going to mind rot now. Because I think we need to top deck something that'll interact with those plays. Oh wow, alright. Well, got two forests. That's less good. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, maybe we should have waited there. Oh, Dry green seeker. It's almost like that makes more lands. This is a very similar start to my opponent's last game. One three is galore with an explosive apparatus. Okay, well we can play frilled sea serpent. It's possible frilled sea serpent's just not something my opponent can answer. They again did not seem to have tons of removal, but we don't have anything for now. We kept a, a risky hand, and we've we've drawn a lot of lands for it, so the punishment has been kind of real. Me play another Omen Speaker, and putting two more cards on top. Gonna get a free draw off the Green Speaker. Yeah, this is a pretty nice little combo. The Scry drawing you a free card. This is a definitely upside. Poof. Okay. Well. Yeah, we'll pass here. Yeah, maximum punishment from a. Pretty awkward keep. I'm using the Green Seeker. Does miss, which means they maybe don't have another land just yet. Okay, they didn't have a play. Uh, if they have, like, Counterspell, it's pretty bad, but I'm not sure we can really play around it either. Hopefully no Essence Scatter is on our horizon. Oh man, Bone to Ash. Oh, crushed. Oof. We can't just not play, though. Oh, that hurts, though. Yeah, I think our odds to win this game are also quite poor. Who knows though? I mean, we might still like top gen, top deck gin of wishes. Maybe their counter magics out of their hand now. We just get to go from there. Center courser. <laughs> well, there it is, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Um. So now we're praying my opponent doesn't have essence scatter, which does, looks like they don't. Genovishes is pretty good. So let's see. We may have time if my opponent wanted to like swing with Courser and the Apparatus. I oh, totally lost. So we could disperse that back to our hand, but I think I'm honestly just okay with drawing it again. Keeping up disperse. We do take five here, which is no small amount. My opponent probably doesn't have counter magic. Alright. Genovishes take two. And we'll pass. Opponent does draw a free island off the Green Seeker. Card has been very good. And my opponent's deck in general looks pretty solid here. I think the first game more than the second game, since the second game we've just kind of been struggling. So this actually isn't too bad. The thing is, my opponent swings with everything. We could block the Centaur Courser. I guess we could bounce Dwindle, block the Centaur Courser, but then we're offering that as a trade, which doesn't seem great. We could wait and just try and get value off the Gin of Wishes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which means if we draw a land off the top, it'd have to be an island. We could activate Gin and play Sleep. I think we realistically have to disperse this turn. Do we want to try and trade Gin of Wishes for the Centaur and the Explosive Apparatus? Still have like Macabre Waltz we could draw. Or Gravedigger. Yeah, I, th I think that's kind of what I... Well, the problem is, then my opponent just gets Dwindle back, too, though. Let's see, we take 3, 6 here. If we play the Djinn again next turn, that's just not going to be enough. Explosive Apparatus kills us. I think we have to accept the Dwindle. So let's bounce Dwindle. Block the Centaur Courser. 
and do get a, I guess, a free one for one. One uses the apparatus to kill it, sure. And we're in a bad spot. Grave Digger would be great. I think we just have to sleep here. We could take three more damage and maybe sleep next turn. Maybe that's a little bit better. It does use up our mana potentially next turn, which is a little bit awkward. And I also probably should not have played that land, because if we get Macabre Walls, I'd much rather pitch a land. All right, it's a bad sign with the Dream Speakers getting in on damage, though. Sky Scanner, yet another one damage, <laughs> getting close to lethal threat. Yeah, there's another sleep. It's kind of funny. Well, we will sleep for days. And next turn we'll sleep again, but it's the light is fading awfully fast here. Yeah, with Tezzeret in play. Okay. Tragedy. Well, we, we still got a good shot at <laughs> excuse me. A good shot at a um four and one here, I think. Again, technically I, I I hate conceding. I think it's kind of a bad habit I've got. So might as well play it all out, but there is no victory to be found here. I guess we could find like Salvager of Secrets and Sleep next turn. We do technically have enough mana for that. No, we don't even have double blue. All right, good games to my opponent, good games. I guess we could switch to the Green Seeker. Nah, we, we won't waste the time. GG's to my opponent. Thoroughly smashed that that time around. Kept kind of a speculative uh, match or game two keep, and yeah, Te Tezzeret ran over us pretty pretty well in the first game. But what are the odds of three Tezzerets in a row? Right, we're not gonna have to face it in the next match, right? Right. All right, we are back for match five after being soundly thrashed in our last match, but we can still go four and one and still go the distance. At least get our uh, PTQ invitation here. I, man, my opponent's playing first. We have Vampire Neonate, we have Omen Speaker. This hand is really, really close. We have two draws to the land, it's about a 70%, and I think if we do that, Omen Speaker will be able to follow it up after that. I'm gonna keep, this is speculative, but I think this hand is potentially good. Opponent says, power keeps going out here, you may win on me being timed out. Hopefully it does not come to that. My opponent's mulligan down to five. Definitely not here hoping to start out one of these series, but it may turn out they have a better draw than we do if we can't find some lands. We have like 70% chance though, and we have both colors despite only having one land. If we hit Omen Speaker, I feel like we can set up the next lands after that. All right, we missed on number one. So, oof, down to, I guess, a little bit better than a 50% chance of hitting a land. Ugh, it's gonna be unfortunate. Opponent is stuck at one, two. Come on, land, land, land. Ooh, rough. Okay. Well, we'll play our Vampire Neonate. We don't have to discard at least. My opponent has also gotten stuck here. So we're both in a, a battle to see who can draw more lands sooner. Come on, land, land. Ugh. All right. Ugh. <laughs> I could swing at the Neonate for value, but I suppose that's just BM or something. Come on, land, land off the top. If we get there, we got there. Come on, just give me one. Just the one. Woohoo! Alright. So we were slow, but this is actually a not a disaster. Owen Speaker is likely to set up our next couple of draws, and we do have more resources than my opponent does going forward. Yeah, we're these are great cards. We're gonna have to bottom both of them, unfortunately. Um, I guess we want to put Lich's Crest on bottom first, on the off chance it goes all the way to the bottom, but. And actually, maybe we'd want to sleep more in that case. Okay, well, bottom two non-lands. We've got, I guess, 16 more lands in the top 27. So, have a good shot at it here. If we do hit a land, we can curve out into a blood letter. It's not so bad. Opponent has hit up to three land drops as well, but hasn't been able to play much. Hired Blade, I guess, gets to eat Omen Speaker here if my opponent's got it, but it doesn't look like it. It's not a card that I think you're always hoping to play, especially in a slightly more powerful, slower format like Sealed, where the, the tempo matters a little bit less. Yeah, I think my opponent's really filling that a uh, mold of five here. Exclusion Mage, fair enough. Probably bouncing Neonate, just to get something on the board. 
Yeah, I was going to say, the other two have not irrelevant enter the battlefield triggers, so... Okay, let's hit a land again. Eh, missed, but that's okay. I think we'll play the Neonate plus Wall of Mist. I'm not going to use Explosive Apparatus just to get through for one extra point of damage here. Hmm. I don't know, maybe this hand... No, I think it... I think we were just a little bit unlucky. And even though we didn't hit, we weren't lucky off the top, we did still have other things to do. I think that was a good keep, even though it didn't work out absolutely optimally. And, you know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If... Assume you're not going to die in the early game. You're actually, I think, a little bit better to have some early mana struggles than some late struggles. And we, our hand is just gas. If we get up to five mana, I think it's very, very unlikely that we lose. Okay, land? Eh, no land. We could bounce their exclusion mage. I guess. That's not terrible. We could also just ex use explosive apparatus to get through. If we bounce their exclusion mage... <laughs> this land situation is a mess. Um, if we bounce exclusion mage, they just get to come back in and bounce something. Probably bounce like Neonate again. We can just use the apparatus to get through for damage, but if we're bouncing something this turn, and actually, even though we bounce their exclusion mage, I don't think that's horrendous. They get more good value out of it later. Maybe, maybe we should just explosive apparatus and keep the exclusion mage for more value later on down the road. What if they have the uh, plus two plus zero and comes back to life? Okay, they didn't. That would've been kind of funny though. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it was a good keep, but this has been a messy game. Okay, so we're still hoping to draw lands, I think, first and foremost. Anything like a reasonably sized little exclusion mage here and get in for an extra couple points of damage. Hopefully nothing with a great enter the battlefield effect, like Gravedigger would be a little bit unfortunate here. Oh, Strangling Spores. Okay, fair enough. I mean, we could play the exclusion mage and just have it whiff. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. Um, I think we just sit on our hands. I'll get in for a one with the Omen Speaker and drain with the Vampire Neonate. I mean, we could Macavalt's pitch like Banefire with the intention of getting it back at some point. We could just play Exclusion Mage onto an empty board. No, we don't have to discard yet. I think I'm just going to use the Vampire Neonate. This is, this is a silly game, though. We even bought him two at the Omen Speaker, like. <laughs> We've got to have a massive clump of lands in the middle of our deck. Okay, Exclusion Mage, number two. Good card, for sure. Oh, interesting. Oh, I guess that's true, they don't want to get drained. I was going to say maybe you'd go for the Wall of Mist, since it's a little bit more costly for us to get back into play. But yeah, maybe the Drain is valuable there. That also has the advantage that if we don't draw a land, it's more likely we have to discard something. Come on, land. Hey, we got one. So, don't want a Grave Digger, even though that actually might be the most efficient play. Because if we Grave Digger, we bring another card back into our hand, we just have to discard it anyway. <laughs> it's funny. We just have all these card advantage engines, and getting card advantage doesn't do much at this point. Do we Exclusion Mage? Their Exclusion Mage. They get Exclusion Mage. Our Exclusion Mage. We do that, we play the Vampire Neonate. It kind of uses up their time, I suppose. We get in for one extra point of damage, too. Yeah, I don't hate this. It's maybe not fantastic, but it's not atrocious either. Let's go ahead and attack with our Omen Speaker. <laughs> Man, this game is the derpiest, dirtiest game I think I've seen in the format. If either of us had had like, a remotely reasonable start, the other person would have just folded. <laughs> but here we are on turn 10, and we both have, like, max cards in hand. We have eight lands on the battlefield. They miss again. They have to play the Exclusion Mage. This is so funny. <laughs> yep, all right. You got me. You got me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, mean, I just can't stop laughing. This is so silly. Okay, we hit five lands. Um... <laughs> I think Jin of Wishes is probably going to come down. Hopefully that'll let us finish the game. My phone's only one mana off of five, and it's very likely they have like a Lich's Crest in their hand. But we have Macabre Waltz to bring it back and Gravedigger, so I think I like putting pressure on my opponent. I think it's probably likely they'll just trade Exclusion Mages here. My opponent's deck looks pretty good. I mean, from what we've seen of it. Two Exclusion Mages, Strangling Spores. Looks like they are playing for a, a slower game as well. Probably going to be a matchup where we want to bring Macabre Waltz in. 
Okay, Jin of Wishes is a good card, though. We've, we are online here. And we're down below seven cards in hand for the first time in a minute, so that's not so bad either. Oh man, they're even... Are they also splashing for Banefire? Because that would be the, the ultimate humor here. <laughs> okay, Disperse on the Jin. No Banefire, at least. No follow-up beyond that. Okay. Okay, we found a mountain, which means our Banefire starts getting closer to lethal. I think we still just want to play Jin plus like Vampire Neonate here, rather than like Banefire trying to salvage and then Banefire again shenanigans. I think we're better off just getting onto the board here. But I like having the mountain. Having that, the option to Banefire is pretty good. We really have played like the same exact deck this whole time though. It's pretty funny. Player Neonate. Opponent looks like they've f 6 so don't have to worry about counter magic, I don't think. And we may have lethal this turn. Nah, my opponent's got Abitrick or something here. They've hit seven lands. Like, it's not like their hand, their deck just doesn't do anything. Okay, let's go to attacks. I guess if they allow it, I mean, Banefire can't be countered. His Omen Speaker is like the highest damage dealing card in the, the game so far. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay, opponent considered long and hard. Still don't think there's anything that just like really blows us out here. Okay, opponent concedes. What was in their hand? Unless they were playing a really greedy deck, maybe they had a bunch of red or... I don't know. Double red? That was a mess, though. Okay, I'm going to go on the assumption my opponent's relatively controlling. Maybe not. What, what would have been in their hand, though? They played a bunch of like good kind of tempo cards. Maybe Macabre Waltz is a mistake. I feel like Wall of Mist probably just won't be great in this matchup, though. And I'll bet that Aether Tunnel doesn't look particularly good. I think I'm going to bring in a, another Macabre Waltz. Hopefully this draw is a little bit better. Hmm. Interesting. You know, <laughs> I really did feel like that hand was just going to work out fine. And I think that, I don't know, a reasonable amount of the time it will work out fine. But that was pretty bad. I'm going to keep this hand. I think this hand actually is arguably about as speculative as the last one. But we have Vampire Neonate. If we find an island over the next couple, like three draws, we can play Exclusion Mage. Seems okay. You know, I'm only now thinking of this, but I wonder if it's correct to draw in this sealed environment. Our matches have been pretty slow. The extra card may matter more than tempo. It's not like we have like tons and tons of card draw or anything and then catches us up. I guess the best we've got is like Gin of Wishes. I wonder if my opponent actually is like three colors. Okay, well, missed on the land again. We are playing 18, like, I would think that we should get it most of the time here. Plan using Vampire Neonate. <laughs> my opponent missing a two? Oh my goodness. Are we serious right now? <laughs> what even is this game? Come on, land, don't do this to us. Okay, we hit a land at least. Um, do I want to play Exclusion Mage? I guess that's kind of nice eventually. No, I feel like we want to get value still. On the other hand, my opponent might just have like enter the battlefield effect. Maybe we just want to impact the board. All right, Exclusion Mage. I mean, their, their mana is going to be tight here, but I, I kind of want to start beating down, I guess. So. Man, we were very close to us both just missing our third land drop. Yeah, and I, I pretty much just want to draw lands more than anything else. Oh, crazy. But were they just a four-color deck? Maybe base green? Ooh, Chaos Wand. Yeah, that's pretty good against us. There are... I guess we have our best hit in our hand already, Lich's Caress. But we have a lot of things that they could hit here. Switcheroo, Sleep. Uh, I guess Banefire doesn't do tons. But like Mind Rot, Dissipate. Yeah, there, there's some stuff for my opponent there. Okay. Well, we'll beat for two and plan using or hitting in with the Vampire Neonate. We do not have anything we can play on four, at least right now. Yeah, plan draining with the Neonate. This card is overperformed. I feel like it's it's just good, I think, in most sealed pools. I'm not in love with it in draft, but it's just felt good in most sealed pools. Chaos Wand, I think, has the potential to be brutal here, though. Utilize our Neonate. Do you still just want to draw a land? That's our best draw by a country mile. Oh, it allows that. Land. No land. Well, we drew one of our uh, 
effects here. I guess let's go ahead and attack. Sure. And pulling these out of our, our deck actually has some merit, since my opponent looks like they're going to be trying to use them against us. My opponent's got sweet, like, sort of natural Tron here. Hired Blade. Okay. So they actually are playing this card. I didn't. I played pretty cavalierly against it, I guess, last game. But willing to trade. Fine by me. Three drop for three drop. And yeah, let's mind drop. Again, my opponents had a little bit of difficulty hitting their land drops. This is probably going to get legit cards. And we have enough expensive stuff we're going to be playing from here on out in the game that just using the mind drop when we can is good, I think. My opponent's name is Use Cheese. It's a pretty good name. Catalyst Elemental and Lightning Mare. Yeah, man, I don't know what my opponent's deck is. They never found green, I guess, in the last match. Lightning Mare is double red. They're just like legit four color. Four color Chaos Wand. They're 3 1. Their deck's gotta be good. Poison Tip Archer. Yeah, that's a good card. Not using Chaos Wand just yet. Come on, land. Nice. And it was even an island, so we could play the Jin if we wanted. I am a little bit tempted to play the Gearsmith Guardian and try and trade away for Poison Tip Archer, because if they're playing all these colors, they've got bombs. Like, I don't really want to use Lich's Caress just on that. Yeah, I think that's okay. And I'd much rather trade this than the Jin of Wishes away, so. Go ahead and pass. If we draw another land, we could play like Frilled Sea Serpent next turn, which is pretty good. Another potential way that we start beating on our opponent. And we do have sleep, so if we get a couple of like reasonably sized beaters in there, my opponent potentially dies faster than you might expect. So what hits does my opponent still have? They could find Macabre Waltz, of which there are two in the deck. My opponent could find... Oh, interesting. I'm... I mean, I'm not... Well, do I block? Disperse. Okay. Sure. One gets in for two points of damage. Gets a little bit of a tempo win. Let's see if they can do anything with their last three mana here. Oh. Can we find another land? I don't really want Filled Sea Serpent to get countered. Our opponent didn't show us counter magic last game, though. They have to have exactly Essence Scatter here. We're just going to go for the, the Serpent. No counter spell? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, looks like they actually have it. Okay, fair enough. Well, maybe we should have gone for the Guardian then, but it's okay. I guess that would be one reason why you would disperse there if you're trying to remove a threat permanently. It's so like I said, my opponent can hit two Macabre Waltzes out of our deck, which would be good for them. I mean, they get like back two reasonable creatures here. And anticipate there's a disperse, one sleep. It's switcheroo. Switcheroo right now isn't fantastic, although it is getting better against like Gin of Wishes and the like. Activating Chaos Wand. Switcheroo? Ah, oh, sleep. Okay, that's fine. Well, it gets value here, but not massive value. Really want Switcheroo. That would have been the best. I think it's a May effect, right? Um, you may cast that card, so they wouldn't switch, but it would just be a Stone Cold Brick. Yep, we're taking it. My opponent's got to have bombs, right? There's no reason we want to Lich Crest this, I don't think. Okay, Mountain's not bad. I think we're just going to play the Guardian here. We, again, we could go for the Gin of Wishes, but I'm really afraid of the Switcheroo. I guess if my opponent hits Gearsmith Guardian, that's kind of bad for us too, but mm, I'm not sure how best to play around this. Chaos Wand is awfully chaotic. We are two lands away from being able to Gin and immediately Wish. I guess that's one way we can maybe play around it some. Player Gearsmith Guardian. <laughs> yeah, what a weird series. First game was like... Derpy, derpy, derpy. <laughs> this game is Chaos Wand shenanigans. Both games just feel like we're playing weirdly off the top of our library. Like, I have a lot of cards in my deck, but we're still, like, playing off the top of the library. Does this go on the bottom? Bottom. So those three are on the bottom. So there's three lands. Just not touching the graveyard. Okay. That's fine. I'm still not going to trade for this. On the other hand, if we do trade, we play Gin of Wishes, then Switcheroo misses. 
On the other hand, if they hit like Macabre Waltz, they get to bring it back. I think I don't hate trading, actually. This is a good trade, quote unquote, for my opponent. We have Gen of Wishes in hand. And if they don't have a follow up play, the fact that we can play it next turn is upside. Want to activate Chaos Wand? Nope, something else. Rise from the Grave. Okay, fair enough. And that was going to get us at some point anyway. Another land. Could Lich's Caress it and set up for Gin of Wishes in the future. We are now one mana away from Gin immediate activation. I still feel like using Lich's Caress here is bad for us, though. As it stands right now, my opponent's hits off Chaos Wand are just not that great. I think I'm still just going to wait. We've already used our Mind Rod. They can't hit that. It's a weird game. <laughs> I might pull out Switcheroo, actually, if my opponent doesn't look like they have, like, massive bombs here. Oh, I should use this in a response always. Okay, Banefire is out of our graveyard, or out of our deck now. Doesn't actually do anything. These are all on the bottom. They go in a random order. So I should keep this kind of as a, a track of what could be. So we've got eight cards deep now. I guess the bottom six cards of our library are cards. And we put five lands on the bottom. Funny thing is, like, this is an even race still at this point. Man, my phone's deck is so weird. It's just like Chaos 1, 5 color. Okay, Skymarch Blood Letter is a pretty good draw. We play our... Yeah, I still think we don't play Gin of Wishes. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy playing around Switcheroo. That aggressively because if we played it earlier on we just we'd be absolutely smashing my opponent at this point oh they may have been activating chaos one more aggressively too all right let's pass we're, we're winning the race on board my opponent again has fine hits but not great hits of chaos wand and if my opponent ever does hit switcheroo then we get to slam our gin of wishes and if we get to get like one wish out of it we may just slam it anyway Okay, hitting Disperse this time around. Those are now all on the bottom. Sure. We will activate this. Bounces the Neonate back. And we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 deep. So there's 10 cards left in the deck, of which Switcheroo's in there. Both Macabre Waltzes are in there. Uh, what else? Skeleton Archer's in there. Gravedigger's in there. Anticipate's in there. Interesting they wanted to attack there. There's Gravedigger. So we can get back the Frilled Sea Serpent. That's pretty good. Also get back Geared Guardian, but I think the Sea Spitter or the Sea Serpent's actually stronger. My opponent does have double blue for it, which is kind of interesting. Because they can still switch through. I think we're still taking it though. Opponent got counter magic. Bone Dash, fair enough. <laughs> okay, we'll play our Neonate. We'll bash in for two. <laughs> Man, this game's so weird. I mean, this is a really fun way to end the sealed, but... Like, what even is this? My opponent's gotta be splashing for something good in green. They do look like they're maybe just, like, legit three colors outside of that, but they've gotta be splashing for something good in green. Something we're gonna be happy to Lich's Cress. Almost want to hit Macabre Waltz now. Switcheroo is still probably the best thing for them to hit. Anticipate, gosh darn it. <laughs> if we draw Switcheroo, that's not bad. <laughs> what is this game? So my opponent's gonna have something here. Tapping for white for exclusion mage. Okay, sure. Bounces the vampire neonate again, gets in for another two points. Okay, so we are one. Five, seven, ten cards steep. We have another eight cards to go. Pawn cracks him with poison tipped archer. We go down to our sixteen. We draw. Don't have double blue for the gin still. I think I'm actually okay trading life. Especially because the vampire neonate just blocks the exclusion mage all day long. So let's swing in with the Sky March Bloodletter. 
Salvager of Secrets is still pretty far down in the deck, so we don't have a great shot of just stealing back Banefire immediately. The thing is, like, the longer I don't play Gen of Wishes, the worse it looks like that I didn't originally play Gen of Wishes. <laughs> now it's just getting more and more likely every time they cast one of our spells. And they seem content to do nothing, so I, I don't know what's going on still. Could solve another counter spell. I don't know. We'll block there. Probably gonna take a ride on the Chaos Wand here. Nope. Okay. Who knows? They got like Plague Mare. They're playing a lot of other kind of crazy cards. Demon of Catastrophes. All right. There is a card we want to let's just caress. Or. Switcheroo? Come on, off the top of the deck. Come on, Switcheroo. That would be so sweet. Chaos Wand. <laughs> So, they don't have to play it, but that's still funny. Man, I would have liked to have hit Switcheroo for us there, though, because I really would like to steal their demon. And the problem is we still do have two Macabre Bolts in the deck, so they can still uh, get back their demon once we've killed it. But we can safely enable Gin of Wishes at this point, and they do have to replay this card, which involves sacrificing creatures, and Sleep, I think, can get us there now. Okay, so there's exactly Macabre Wall, so is that our only spell left? So we could wait a turn. We could, like, play Jinn of Wishes. We can't sleep in the same turn. Interesting. But we could Macabre Waltz. Not too much. Exclusion Mage? Actually, Macabre Waltz Exclusion Mage seems pretty solid. So we play Jinn, get back Exclusion Mage, maybe pitch... Or maybe we just, just get back Exclusion Mage, pitch something else. That's 10 mana. We actually can't do all of that. We bounce my opponent's demon. It's very likely that they use the Chaos Wand next turn, and then they get back our second Macabre Walls. There's nothing else they can hit, right? We played one of our sleeps. We have the other one. Batlish's Crest, which we've seen. We've got Mind Rot out of the way. They played our Disperse, they played our Disperse, they played our Anticipate. There's nothing else they can hit in the deck after that. And I think it's likely that they will spin this next turn. Might as well, right? So we play Macabre Waltz, bring back Exclusion Mage, bounce it. Don't utilize any of our cards in our hand. We could bring back like Frilled Sea Serpent and pitch something else. I think we want Lich's Caress. I think we still want Sleep, too. Am I getting too fancy? Maybe sleep isn't good. Oh, I think that's okay. So play Macabre Waltz, play Exclusion Mage. We could pitch actually Gin of Wishes and then Gravedigger it back. That's actually a little bit better, right? Yeah, so we, we have nine mana. Where the heck are my Lich's Cresses and Murses, Murders? Okay, so we're gonna bring back Exclusion Mage, bring back Gravedigger. A two for that. Pitch our Jinnah Wishes, play both of those, bounce the demon, get a 2-2 into play, play our... Yeah, okay. And bring back our Jinnah Wishes. So discard Jinn, play our Exclusion Mage first and foremost, bounce the demon. Sure. My opponent again can make a, a whirl on the Macabre Waltz next turn. Play Gravedigger. Bring back our Gin of Wishes. Trilled Sea Serpent just better. And eh, Gin's a little bit cheaper and has a little bit more upside. <laughs> My opponent says. Yeah, we have our one Lich's Crest in the deck and we have no murders. So we were fortunate that we'd already drawn that. Okay. And we'll swing with our Skymarch Bloodletter for good value here. We potentially can go for Lethal next turn off of Sleep and. Uh, Activation of the Vampire Neonate. I think we got my opponent. <laughs> my opponent is going to run us out of spells, though. <laughs> okay, Plummet. Fair enough. I guess I shouldn't probably post that, even though that's a, a funny comment. It does tell my opponent a little bit more information, potentially. Okay. That means we don't necessarily just have lethal next turn, which is nice. And Chaos Wand. Activating. 
Okay, hits the macabre walls. That's the last effect they get. And we are at 15 cards deep into the library. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's three more draws left that we could find. We took out explosive apparatus. Okay, anyway. So my opponent returned exclusion mage and catalyst elemental and discarded catalyst elemental. Which means they like oh the other card's the demon, that's right. So I get to play the exclusion mage and bounce something here. It's not all bad. And then it can turn it into a demon fodder. They did not attack that turn. This is a really fun game. It's like super grindy. I think it's partially because my opponent's deck is weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta give them props for going this far. Oh, we didn't take Apparatus. That's right, we took out Wall of Mist. So Apparatus was one of our last three draws. We still have Sky Scanner. What's our last one? I'm not even sure. I'm not sure it's worth trying to figure out, even though we could in theory. So let's see. We can sleep, play Explosive Apparatus, and drain, and probably just kill my opponent off of that. Let's see, if we sleep this turn, odds are they've got two things that come in next turn, they bounce something, so we could just Lich's Crest this this turn. We kill that, that's five, in for four, we, so that's five mana out of nine. So we utilize Lich's Crest, utilize Explosive Apparatus, that's all of our mana. So we couldn't sleep, but... And we can't drain either. So we could play Lich's Crest, kill off the poison tipped archer, get in. We could also just Gin of Wishes and wait. Gin of Wishes with Lich's Crest up. So my opponent's probably gonna go for that attack next turn. That's all they've got in their hand. Oh, they can just exclusion mage this next turn. I wanna keep up Vampire Neonate, I think, to drain. Yeah, play the Gin. <laughs> this is tough. Religious Crest, if they don't top deck anything, we've got lethal, right? Because we swing for two, we drain, and then next turn we sleep, kill off the remaining things. My opponent is down to two at that point. Explosive Apparatus is lethal. I think actually we're just going to Lich's Crest. And trust that sleep is enough to get us through next turn, or next game. It really should be. Okay, so we should have Lich's Crest this miles ago, but that is what it is. We know the two cards in my opponent's hand, so shouldn't have anything here. And Chaos 1 is now just a miss. That's what I've been needing, yeah. Swing with Gravedigger and Exclusion Mage. Take my opponent to 3. Play Explosive Apparatus. Nug my opponent for another 2 points off the Neonate. And pass the turn. It's funny, we're never going to play our Gin of Wishes either. <laughs> what even was this game? At least we did not get got by the switcheroo, right? Maybe this game went way too long. Maybe I should have been able to kill my opponent er way earlier. But I think we have gotten my opponent to a position where they just can't win anymore. Okay, they play the, play the Exclusion Mage. I imagine try and bounce the Neonate. Brain my opponent. Explosive Apparatus is lethal on board now. Means they probably have to go for Chaos Wand. They go for Chaos Wand, it misses. That should be game. Yep, the end. Oh, wait. Does it go back in the library if they don't? Oh, weird. Switcheroo goes back into the deck. That's actually not something I realized. Doesn't end up mattering here, but that's not something I realized. Okay, well, I guess I'm glad we didn't play the gym. I, for some reason, effects like this usually like exile them afterwards, and that's just kind of what I figured this was going to do. Another exclusion mage. Okay. But that should be it. Apparatus is just enough. And even if it wasn't, we've got the sleep. Ooh, man, what a grind. Fun last game. Ooh, what a grind. That is literally the last deck card, or last spell in my deck. And I guess my opponent should be aware of it, since they didn't cast the switcheroo the first time around. Opponent says that was better. Yeah. GG's. GG's. Wow, that was <laughs> that was a fun last match. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Cool. I uh, we managed to go four and one all told. Good enough for me. Did manage to lose one pretty or one of the matches pretty resoundingly, but still happy to to pick up the I don't know the sweet PTQ invite and. 
the packs to go along with it. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I guess don't know if I can pull up the deck in a pretty way, but I do have my my paint version, so we can talk about it just a little bit here. I'm not going to wait for the event to end. I think the deck was good. It overperformed from what I expected. I think that the format being slow definitely helped us out and meant that things like Salvager of Secrets and Sleep, Switcheroo, all ended up potentially being pretty good. I was very happy with Gin of Wishes, as is often the case. Frilled Sea Serpent's good. Yeah, just overall, the deck seemed quite powerful. Um, happy to sideboard in the second Macabre Waltz on occasion. Vampire Neonate overperformed. Banefire was good the couple of times we played it. Sleep was probably the MVP, though. Never cut a sleep. I think that's what I learned from this sealed pool. Because it definitely, it was in the back of my head. I was like, man, is it just, it's not going to be that good, right? We're slow, we're dirtily. The tempo is just not always going to matter. But every time we had a sleep, we were happy to have a sleep. So, in any case, I really do appreciate everyone watching. I will probably be a little while before I can have a, a good opportunity to spend all day doing the PTQ, but I'll post bits of that when I get there for you guys. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.